first pitch is a curveball on the outside corner for a strike. Hamas ready. Here's the line in the 0-1 pitch home to Morgan. Fastball swung on and fouled off to the right side. Brennan Bertrand in foul territory with a ball tailing a little bit towards the fair side of the play, and he was able to catch it falling down for the out. And that's the wind we were just talking about blowing out towards the right side of the diamond there. Gave him a little bit of trouble, but he's able to gather it in at the last minute. Okay, Steve, this is my question. Where is the flag? I don't see one out here on this field. I could have sworn they had one last season, but I certainly don't see it. Here's the shortstop, Ross Dowdy. Hamas winds and delivers. Fastball swung on and missed. That one was way up high, but too juicy for Dowdy not to go for it. It's 0-1. Hamas, a quick worker. 0-1 pitch. Fastball a little bit high and outside. It's 1-1. One and, one. and Steve, it appears that Ross is right on top of the plate. Um, two more many, too many of those fastballs get inside. He'll get off the plate in a hurry. Yeah. Wine, here's the 1-1 pitch. Curveball on the outside corner at the knees, 1-2. and two, And that's what we were talking about at the outset of this broadcast. Starting out right towards the hitter's left shoulder and then breaking with late break. One ball and two strikes. He rocks and fires. Curveball, shot to the third baseman, Davila. He's got it. Throw across the diamond is perfect to Bertrand. There's two down. And a perfect start uh, for Eunice High School here tonight. We got a, a quick pop out and three pitches, four pitches into the at-bat. He's got an easy little ground ball and that's exactly the kind of start you want to the ballgame. That brings up the catcher, Brent Duhon. One of the better players, not only on this team, but in the entire state of Louisiana. Another guy right on top of the plate with a slightly open stance, it appears. Just a little bit. Pitch. Fastball. A little bit outside. It's 1-0. Steve C. and Johnny B. with you here from North Park. 1-0 pitch. Curveball on the outside corner at the knees, and the count is even at 1-1. One and one. So far, for, through the first three batters, uh, mixing up pitches very well. Absolutely. He's got them off balance. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curveball swung on and missed, and that was about a 59-and-a-half footer. But when it left his hand, it was at above the letters, and it certainly enticed Duhon to swing at it. He's behind in the count at 1-2. and two. Let's see if he goes with that same pitch. Fastball swung on and fouled off. He was very late on that. Watch out for a couple of vehicles out there crossing 12th Street, and they barely avoid the baseball. So the count remains at one and two. Well, Steve just arrived here on Saturday, and already he's working a ball game. This guy is a quick worker. One ball and two strikes. Duhon ready, awaiting the one-two. Curveball, that one was about 57 feet. Hit the front of the chalk of the batter's box, and the count is two and two. As the press box slams shut, and that might give you an idea of the amount of wind that is all of a sudden picked up. I think I might have jinxed ourselves here when I said there was no wind. 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball, a little bit high. Did he go? No, he didn't. Apparently, the ball grazed him. Might have grazed him somewhere along the arm. And Duhon is awarded first base on the hit by pitch. That's not a bad pitch, though, on a 2-2 count. He came inside with the, the fastball, but it just rode in just a, a little bit. And uh, if it did get him, it didn't get him by much, but enough to give him first base. Now, Steve, you got two down, a fairly fast runner for a catcher. Do you send him in this situation with your cleanup hitter? Try to get a man in scoring position? Well, it's, it's a big game, and... I'm a gambler by nature, so I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Marcus Matlock, the right fielder tonight. Hamus looking in, in the stretch position for the first time in the ballgame. McKeever lays down the fingers, the throw to first. Harmless toss, he's back in safely. Another thing you got to think of, the last two curveballs that Hamus has thrown have been in the dirt, so if you can gamble and, and guess when he's going to throw that curveball, you got that much more of a chance to steal the base, and, and with two outs, you really don't lose anything. Absolutely. The first pitch to Matlock will make its way to the plate right now. Fastball hit high in the air, the right side of the infield, actually in short right. Fontenot having a little trouble with it. He's got it falling back. The second fly ball caught in the inning when the infielder actually fell down. For Crowley in the top of the first, 
No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. We go to the bottom of the first with Roy Sattler inside the press box. Trouble is brewing. We'll go to the bottom of the first with a score. Crowley nothing. Eunice coming to bat on KJJB Supersports. Surgery is not to be taken lightly. A competent physician and a state-of-the-art facility like American Legion Hospital can make having surgery a lot less fearful. Many surgeries today are performed with lasers, under microscopes a lot more efficient. American Legion Hospital has the latest surgical equipment for your doctor and a caring staff of professionals for you to speed along your recovery. When surgery is recommended, come to American Legion Hospital, Medicadiana's regional medical center. Street Designs of Crowley on the Crowley Units Highway, three miles north of Crowley, is the home of super professional window tinting, lettering, banners, custom stripping, and the home of the coolest and largest selection of accessories in this area. Big and his staff have this area's fastest growing auto specialty shop, including an all new showroom, the Cat Daddy. That's Street Designs, three miles north of Crowley on the Crowley Units Highway, where they have the coolest stuff in town for cars and trucks. Call 788-0554. Again, Roy Sadler making all types of noise in the press box. Let's introduce you to the starting lineup of the Eunice Bobcats. Batting first, the left fielder, Derek Myers. The right fielder, Carl Abbott, bats second. The center fielder is Donnie Ballack. Ballack, he will bat third. The third baseman is Lance DeVilla. He's the fourth hitter. The catcher is Rocky McKeever. He bats fifth. Batting sixth is the designated hitter, Bubba Gotro. The seventh hitter is the first baseman, Brennan Bertrand. The second baseman is Mike Fano. He'll bat eighth. And batting ninth, playing short tonight, is Bubba Olivier. Defensively for Crowley, the first baseman is Chance Andrepont. At second, Brock Holly. The third baseman tonight is Keith LeBlanc. At short for Crowley, Rouse Dowdy. The left fielder is Josh Hoffpower. In center, Pappy Morgan. The right fielder, Marcus Matlock. Catching is Brent Duhon. And the pitcher, a big lefty, Michael Johnson, with a mixture of a curveball and a fastball. We haven't seen him through t too many warm-up pitches, so... This will be a challenge for Eunice tonight. They haven't faced too many lefties this season. But they have a predominantly right-handed hitting lineup. As a matter of fact, the only pure lefty in the lineup is Abbott. Donnie Bollock is a switch hitter. And other than that, all you're going to see tonight out of the Bobcats are right-handed hitters. Pretty good at that. I can do a little better. <laughs> the Crowley infield convening on the mound. Myers for the season, Steve, with a rather impressive average. Yeah, Myers coming into this one batting 364. Eight hits, 22 at bats, seven runs driven in. Not bad for a leadoff man. Only struck out five times to go along with 12 walks, so an excellent ratio there. The lefty's first pitch is low for a ball and now you can see the some of the clay swirling across the infield it's really windy here one ball and no strikes the wine and the pitch to Myers fastball up high and it's 2 and 0 oh. after watching those two pitches he appears to be more of a finesse pitcher than anything else but again we'll have to see more in order to get a better judge on that he swings and drills it into center field back is the center fielder Morgan over his head that will be a stand-up double, possibly for Derek Myers. He is standing in and is safe at second base, but I tell you what, that might have been premature for me to call it a standing double because he was nearly thrown out on that impressive throw by Morgan. A leadoff double for the Bobcats and already a runner in scoring position. And a good start once again for Eunice, but uh, Myers, that's his first extra ba base hit of the season, and he gave that ball a right out there. To and rather field. surprising for a guy who does have a lot of power despite the fact he's just a leadoff hitter. That brings up the freshman, Carl Abbott. Will he be in a bunt situation to get the runner over to third? We'll find out. Lefty against lefty. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Low and away. That looked like a curveball. It's 1-0. and oh. Abbott coming into this one batting 259. Perfect spot for number two hitter. You can do all sorts of things here. But right now, I'd imagine he'd be swinging away. You're right, 1-0. Swung on and missed. He blew the fastball right by him, tipped it into the catcher, Duhon's glove, and the count's even at 1-1. One one. 
prime situation for the left-handed batter, even though it's tougher facing the left-handed pitcher. If he can somehow pull the ball on the ground to the right side, advance the runner, he's done his job. Absolutely. Donnie Bollock's on deck. One ball and one strike. Myers with a rather big lead out there. The pitch. Curveball is butted down third, but foul. He got the head of the bat, unfortunately, behind the hitting zone, or behind the bunting zone, I guess you would call it. And that's why... That ball ended up in the Eunice dugout, and it's one and two. And I, I could be wrong, but that it didn't exactly look like a sacrifice bunt. It looked like he wanted to. You're base right. He was running for a base hit. Yep. One ball and two strikes. Abbott quickly back in the batter's box. Here's the stretch. One-two pitch. Outside. Count is two and two. Yeah, but a guy who will put the ball in place only struck out seven times, walked only three. So not bad numbers for number two hitter. Johnson looking in for the sign. 2-2. Fastball is grounded slowly towards the third baseman who gloves it, but it's off his glove, and runners will be safe on first and third. And you wonder, even had the ball got by the third baseman, Steve, had the shortstop had a chance to throw him out, would he have thrown him out? Uh, that was a tough play all around. Uh, his slow bouncer uh, going to, the, to his uh, left side, was the third baseman, and uh, Keith LeBlanc, I believe is how you say it. Absolutely. Uh, going to his left side, he had to feel that ball cleanly come up, down, probably off the wrong foot. Uh, that's a tough play. That's got to be an infield hit. It was. An infield hit for Keith Le for, uh, uh, Carl Abbott, excuse me, runners on the corners with nobody out. Here's Donnie Bollock, who will hit from the left-handed side. Now, he does this. He's a switch hitter, but sometimes he hits lefty against left-handers and righty against right-handers, and who knows what the strategy is, but it's been successful for him. Sometimes it's easier for a guy from the left side to see the breaking ball coming. Pitch. Fastball up high, and it's 1-0. Oh. We're in the bottom of the first here at North Park Field in Eunice, Louisiana. No score between Crowley and Eunice, but the Bobcats are threatening in the bottom of the frame. Taking some practice swings is Bollock. 1-0 pitch home. Fastball on the outside corner, a little bit above the knees, and the count's even at 1-1. One Abbott, who's over there at first base, seven stolen bases. So, uh, well, I think he's got, yeah, you're right, he's seven for seven. <laughs> Throw back to first, and Abbott was leaning, but he's back safely. And he's doing exactly what he wants to do. He's got Johnson out there concerned about him, dancing around a little bit, maybe thinking of swiping a base. Maybe he'll forget about the run over here third. Well, you talked about a man who could fly. What about Donnie Bollock? He's a perfect 21 out of 21 on the base pass, so they certainly pick up speed with him. Here's the stretch and a pitch. Swung on and missed. The throw to second is a strong one, but it's going to be late. Breaking for home is Myers. He's going to be in there. The ball gets by the catcher, Duhon, and now at third base is Carl Abbott. So we'll score that one error on the shortstop. Dowdy on the throw home, allowing the runner to take third. It'll be a stolen base for Abbott. And Donnie Bollock now has a count of one ball and two strikes. Eunice leads one to nothing. And Myers gave just the slightest hesitation to see if that ball went through. The second he saw that it was going to, he broke for the plate, never hesitated, and a double steal. Perfection. Steve, you're a gambler, so you are definitely a fan of the double steal. Oh, you get, you got to love that. <laughs> one ball and two strikes. Well, if you're a big-time gambler, you got to eat Roy's cooking. One-two pitch. It hit him in the back. Just uh, below the back, actually, on the right hip. So now runners will be in the corners again. Actually, I only say that because it's nice and spicy the way I like it. Say, I might not make it out of this booth alive tonight. Especially since everybody knows you're leaving. You're not going to yeah. be missing much. <laughs> exactly. Lance DeVille is the cleanup hitter, and he's got a great situation for him. Runners on the corners. Eunice leading one nothing. And Michael Johnson better start throwing some strikes consistently, Steve, or the Bobcats are going to blow this open early. Well, you've got the manager out talking to his pitcher right now. And uh, let me get my name straight here. Debye, is that how you say that? Debye. Debye, that was close, not bad. Anyway, he's in a prime position here. you got your number four hitter up there. And it, it, some guys like, like to say that the best pitch to look for is the first pitch coming from your pitcher right now because the first thing he wants to do is throw a strike. He's having control problems. So right now, uh, he can just sit back and look for a fastball, maybe get lucky and find one down the middle, and then Eunice is going to have a, a, a big lead. Now, we should note that Lance is an excellent hitter to the opposite field, so he might be looking that way. 
And the center fielder, Morgan, looks like he has him shaded slightly towards left center. So he's got plenty of real estate out there in right field. Johnson looks in for the sign, the stretch. The pitch runner going. Swung on, hit high in the air to foul territory. Breaking back for first is Bollock. Will it land in foul territory? Yes, it will. Nobody got over there despite the fact that three players converged on the baseball. And it's simply a fly ball strike. But once again, Eunice going with the aggressive approach, sending the runner from first, trying to get things going for them, making them force the play. And Donnie Bollock had an excellent jump. That would have placed runners in second and third. But again, you can't fault the hitter. He wanted to throw a strike down the middle. That's what he did. Lance got a little bit behind it. Let's see if he can correct that swing. No balls and one strike. You get a guy hitting 413, you give him the green light anytime he wants. Pitch. Stayed high. Looked like an off-speeder. It's one and one. He's got some power, too. They have five long balls on the season. 413 hitter with five home runs. One nothing Eunice, one ball, one strike, nobody out. Now the runner breaks for second. The pitch is swung on. That's hit high in the air into short center field. Bollock will have to go back to first. Morgan has it. Breaking for the plate is Abbott. Now he'll retreat back to third. It was a strong throw, which actually hit the top of the mound, so it took a high hop, but I don't think the fly ball was deep enough to score Abbott anyway, and with nobody out in that situation, you want to save it for your next hitter, Rocky McKeever. Yeah, but Morgan made a very, a very strong throw uh, right on the money, but uh, Abbott did the right thing, uh, made him throw it. And a fundamentally sound play by Morgan. He caught that baseball in center with some momentum going towards the plate, and that's what increased the strength of his throw. So now with runners in the corners and one down and the Bobcats holding a one to nothing lead, here's Rocky McKeever. Let's see if Bollock will get a chance again to steal second. Michael Johnson might pay more attention to him now. Yeah, he took about five steps and Johnson didn't even see him before he released the ball. The pitch, a little bit high and a fastball and it's one ball and no strikes. You're listening to this game tonight on FM 105.5 KJJB, Eunice. And we welcome all our Crowley listeners as well. The Gents and the Cats, the stretch. 1-0, Bollock going. Taken for a strike, the throw to second will not be made, and that's a smart play by Duhon, considering what happened last time. Donnie Bollock has stolen his 22nd base of the season. Two runners are now in scoring position. Yeah, the lone run so far here in the first inning uh, by Yunus came on that double steal, so they did it once, why not try it again? So he did the smart thing and held the ball. Now, however, you got two runners in scoring position. And the 1-1 pitch. Curveball is taken for a ball inside. That was close, and it's 2-1. and one. Two balls and one strike. Number six can try to drive in two and make it 3 nothing. Here's the pitch. Fastball is grounded up the middle, off the glove of the pitcher. And fielded by the shortstop, the throw is in time, but the run scores an excellent play if you're scoring there. One to six to three, as Ross Doughty was able to get the second out, but nonetheless an RBI for Rocky McKeever, and it's two to nothing Bobcats. Yeah, that ball was just scorched up the middle of the field. Johnson able to lay a little bit of leather on it, but a nice play out there by Doherty as uh, he came across the middle. He was actually on the second base side of the field when he threw the ball, did the important thing, and got the out. So two down now in the inning, and... And uh, if Crowley can get out of this just giving up two runs, they're, they're looking pretty good. And if Johnson doesn't get a glove on that baseball, it's three to nothing. With only one out. Gotro, the hitter. First pitch is lined into left field, and that ball is going to make it all the way to the fence, past the left fielder. Gotro doesn't have a lot of speed, but he should be able to make it to second standing up, and he does. He drives in the third run of the inning for the Bobcats, scoring Donnie Bollock. It's three to nothing. Talk about a ball that was hit right in the middle of the bat. I mean, that was one right there. That ball was just scorched. It was on a line the whole way out left field. No chance out there. And Josh Hoffpower looked like he misjudged it a little bit because he didn't break as soon as the ball was hit. But nonetheless, it would have been a difficult play anyway. That ball was hit like a rocket. <laughs> and here's Brennan Bertrand. The pitch. Fastball low, 
Bertrand hitting 367. Eight hits, 22 at bats coming into the season. And it's really, really improved his hitting. Sorry about that, Steve. One ball and no strike. Short laid out there by Gautreaux at second. The pitch. Fastball swung it late and fouled it off. I guess hitting 367, he must be doing something right. Oh, yeah. Last year he was struggling a little bit with strikeouts. Didn't get much playing time as a result. Of course, he was a, on a senior-oriented ball club last year. Now he's a senior. So he's stepping it up to another level. One ball and one strike. Bertrand awaits. The throw to second is high, but caught by the shortstop, Dowdy. That was headed in the center field. But quite frankly, Gotro on that one wouldn't have been able to advance to third because the alert Pappy Morgan was racing in, backing up the play. Yeah, right now Johnson just trying to do anything to get out of the inning. And uh, like you said, Johnson was backing up the play nicely, but that throw was nowhere near the bag. One ball and one strike. Here's a delivery. Curveball, he swung over it and missed it. Duhon dropped it, but didn't get far enough away from him in order for the runner to advance. It's one and two. And clearly Brennan overcommitted there on that pitch, probably expecting a fastball judging by that swing. Yeah, that's the trouble you get into when you're when you're guessing on a certain pitch. And uh, he got fooled badly on that one. Two strikes, one ball, three in, one on pitch. Curveball is low and outside, and the count evens at two and two. On what started out as a rather calm night, but I guess once nightfall descended, it became a very windy night. You can see the screen just blowing here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch. Fastball fouled off to the right. Count is still two and two. Derek Meyer started the inning with a double. Abbott then with an infield single. Meyer scored on a double steal. Rocky McKeever then a couple of batters later hit a ground ball off the pitcher to the shortstop scoring the second run and then Bubba Gotro's two out double made it three to nothing. Here's the two two. Fastball inside almost clipped Bertrand and the count is now three and two so we'll see our first payoff pitch of the ball game. And this is a big pitch for Johnson with two outs. He really needs to, to clamp down and uh, get this out. The last thing he needs right now is to go and have to face another batter. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the offering. Fastball high. Bertrand laid off it. He's at first base with a walk. And here comes Mike Fontenot to the plate. Mike Fontenot had a very big St. Landry Parish tournament. He got three hits in that championship game. The pitch. Fastball is right down the middle, and that's a strike. No balls and one strike. On deck would be the ninth hitter of the inning, number 10. Right now is the eighth hitter of the inning, number 9. A one. Curveball is a beauty on the inside corner at the knees, and the count now is 0-2, and, and Fontenot's in a hole. So after Johnson gives up that big walk, we just talked about two nice pitches here. Well, he's got to throw, yeah, he's got to throw these types of pitches against the top of the lineup, though. 0-2. Fastball outside. Wasted one. It's 1-2. One One ball, two strikes. Two on, two outs. 3 nothing. Eunice. Bottom one in the pitch. Curveball. He swung over it and missed. Duhon will have to throw out the runner. He does. And that's the inning. However, for the Bobcats, they score three runs. They do it on three hits. There was one Crowley air and two men left. We played an inning from North Park Field to score. Eunice three, Crowley nothing on KJJB Supersports. We know you're in a hurry when you use the drive up, so we do our best to get you on your way as soon as we can. But there's always time to smile, say hello, and let you know we appreciate your business. Try Parish Bank. Member FDIC, hometown people. Looking for the services of a professional shoe repair shop? Look no further than Hugh Paul's Boot and Shoe Repairs. Dana Hugh Ball has won several awards for her work, and all repairs are made by Hugh Balls, from new heels and soles to rebuilding shoes. Dana even resells baseball gloves. 
Ladies, take advantage of our special offer. Every fifth set of heels we put are free. Your shoes will last a lot longer when you trust them to Dana Huval, an award-winning cobbler. At Huval's Boot and Shoe Repairs, 901 North Parkinson in Crowley, call 783-7938. We're back at North Park Field with a Bob Catsley, the Gents, three to nothing. Folks, this is a first for me. Two Californians in the press box, and tell you what, I've survived so far. Six innings to go. You think I can do it, Steve? It shouldn't be that difficult. Of course, difficult. have you ever been with a Floridian in the press box? I've never even seen a Floridian. Oh, man. Well, I'm not the typical South Floridian because my 10 has really gone to hell, man. <laughs> I used to have one before I ventured into southwest Louisiana. Just a slight one, but... That's all gone. Well, then I don't have much to worry about to get about keeping my beautiful tan. <laughs> Chris Hamus now will pitch to the fifth batter of the Crowley lineup. It's the third baseman, Keith LeBlanc. He looks in for the sign. And here's the first pitch at the top of the second. Fastball is grounded on two hops to the shortstop. Olivier on the run. His throw is perfect to Brennan Bertrand. There's one down. And that's a nice play. Coming in, it wasn't hit real hard, but he had to throw it on the run and made a perfect strike. Got him by two steps. And had he not charged it, that probably would have been a base hit. Oh, most definitely. He's got to charge that ball, and he played it exactly how he had to play it. Here's the left fielder, Josh Hoffpower. Here's the wine and the pitch. Curveball is a beauty on the outside corner, and so far, Steve... Chris Hamas has excellent command of that breaker. Yeah, he's doing whatever he wants right now with both of his pitches, the, the curveball and the fastball. And he's had an easy inning and a, and a third to start out. No balls and a strike. Steps off the mound momentarily. And that's because the batter, Hoffpower, stepped out of the box. Here's the wine and the 0-1 pitch. Fastball, boy, looked like he threw that one an extra six or seven miles an hour, and he bounced it off the chest protector of the catcher, McKeever, and the count evens at one and one. One ball and one strike. Pitch home. Curveball, a beauty again on the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. And again, on this level, you rarely see a guy with such great command of his curveball. I know we're only in the top of the second, but so far they cannot solve Hamas. Let's see what he throws here on the one-two. That's a fastball and taken for a called strike three on the knees. And it looked like he put a little bit of extra on that one. Well, you, you could see the, the batter there was looking for that curveball again because he'd had such good success with the location on the pre previous two pitches. Snuck a fastball on the inside corner, beautiful pitch, and he called third strike. So he's winning the mental game between pitcher and batter. Well, pitching is at least 50% mental, if not more. Uh, the other 50% is probably location, yeah. and he's got both right now. Absolutely. Here's Chance Andropon. First pitch. Fastball is low, and I think he's throwing the ball even harder in the second than he did in the first. Seems his arm is now fully stretched. Yeah, he's throwing the ball hard, but one thing you have to concern yourself with, with a guy who can throw the ball hard, is overthrowing. And when that happens, you either see really high or really uh, short pitches. But that one is on the knees on the inside corner, one ball and one strike. So that temporarily put that theory to rest, but you're absolutely right. That can happen. One ball, one strike in the pitch. Fastball is a beauty, but a little bit low. It's two and one. And that's a prime example of when a guy's throwing hard and has his stuff, he's just missing. And uh, when you're throwing that hard and just missing, it could be a, a, an easy night for you. Yeah, it could be his night. Let's see what he does on the 2-1. He takes a sign from McKeever, who receives it initially from Co head coach Scott Phillips. Curveball swung on, hit into short center field. The second baseman, Fontenot, is out, and he drops the baseball. He drops the baseball, simply didn't look it in, and now the airs are even in this ball game at one. And, that, and that's a tough play out there in shallow center field, but he was able to get to the ball in time. Uh, it's hard to say what could have happened with an uh, evening ball games. Uh, lights, the darkness, or maybe you just simply dropped it. It's just one of those things. Well, when the wind is blowing like it is, you really got to secure that baseball with two hands and make sure it stays in your glove. And you, you've got to catch that ball up above your head, and he tried to catch it right at his chest, and that, and that didn't really help matters either. Excellent point. Here's the second baseman, Brock Holly, with a man on first and two down. About a four-step lead over there. It's a rather sizable one. The pitch fastball is a beauty at 0-1. I mean, this guy is really humming it up there. No balls and one strike. Holly with his practice swings. 
Andropont with his lead. Hamas with his pitch. Curveball in the dirt, swung on and missed. It gets by the catcher, McKeever. Going to second is Andropon, who takes a big turn over there. It'll be a wild pitch, but what does Hamas accomplish? He has a two-strike count on the hitter, Holly. And right now with two outs, you got two strikes on the batter. Just forget about that guy that reaches second base. And, and you've got to really just just work on getting the batter. Just concentrate. Just forget about the guy at second and, and try to make a great pitch here on an 0-2 camp. They tell you that when you're six or seven years old. 0-2. Fastball. Little bit high. Didn't miss by much. Just what you were saying a few minutes ago, Steve, that when you're throwing well and your pitchers are called for balls, that's because they're not missing by a lot. One ball, two strikes. The stretch and the pitch. Curveball taken for a called strike three at the knees. And Holly didn't like it, but he is out of there. No runs, no hits, one air and one man left. After an inning and a half, the score. Eunice three, Crowley nothing on KJJB Supersports. It's one of Acadiana's finest flower shops with some of the most creative florists in this area. It's Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F in Crowley. Mike and Tootie are waiting to create that special arrangement for that special person on that special day. Call Aurora Flowers and Gifts at 783-2224 and they'll create something special for you or one of your loved ones. Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F, where beautiful things happen every day. Are you in the market for a new Kawasaki motorcycle? Maybe thinking about a go-kart for fun for the entire family or looking forward to summer with a new jet ski? Then make the first turn. To first turn of Crowley, that is. You'll find a great selection of outdoor fun from ATVs to motorcycles. For sales, service, parts, and accessories, stop in at first turn of Crowley. 525 Crowley Rain Highway in Crowley or give them a call at 788-1818. Michael Johnson is taking his warm-up tosses, and he hopes there's a better fate for him in the second inning than there was in the first. Steve, he was placing pitches out over the middle of the plate and then lost control of the strike zone. So he's got the number nine hitter to start out with. Maybe that will be a little bit of a boost of confidence for him. Yeah, he had a rough first inning. He got out of it with uh, giving up only three runs. It's, it's three runs. It's, it's a hole that you're now in. But uh, I kind of feel that he was lucky to get out of it with only three now if he can and clamp down. Uh, maybe get a one, two, three inning, or get a couple of easy outs here. Get back his confidence level. Uh, he he could be all right for the next few innings and, and give his team a chance to climb back into the game. Keep us on the radio and watch the national championship tonight. And because of Brady Amon, we don't have our television set here in the press box that he had promised earlier. So we'll have to watch the second half and suffer through that. Unless Amos throws a quick no hitter, and so far he's throwing. No hitter type of stuff. Here's Bubba Olivier. Johnson's ready. The wine in the first pitch to Bubba. Fastball swung on and missed. He took a half swing at it, but nonetheless, it was over the strike zone, so it's 0 and 1. Olivier batting 2 11. He's only struck out five times. Just a sophomore, though. A one. Curveball, a little bit low. One ball and one strike. So a good sign there from Johnson looking to reestablish control of the strike zone, not only with a fastball, with a curveball as well. The count even at one and one. Pitch. Fastball, high and outside, two and one. Looked like he simply did not follow through on that one. Olivier only four hits and 19 at bats, but uh, he does have three runs driven in, so he has made them count so far this season. But he's got nobody on base here. 2 1. Low, and it's 3 and 1. And that's discouraging for this pitcher. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're down on what? 2 1 count, 3 1 count uh, to the number nine hitter. It's important for Johnson to battle back right here. Nobody warming up in the Crowley bullpen, which in this case would be down the right field line at North Park Field. 3-1 pitch. He walked him. That was up high. As soon as it left his hand, you knew that that was nowhere near the strike zone. Again, Steve, when you keep the ball up high, it's usually a lack of a follow-through by the pitcher. Yeah, I mean, it, you're either overthrowing or overstriding. The ball's leaving your hand much too soon, and that's what's happening right now to Johnson. Derek Myers laced a double in the first, and he's the batter. Olivier with pretty decent speed over at first. The pitch, 
taken for a strike. Boy, that's the lowest strike I've seen called in a while. But credit the catcher, Duhon, with framing that pitch nicely. It's 0-1. Johnson stretches, looks over at first in the pitch. Curveball, that is a little bit outside, and the count evens at one and one. Right now, if you're Eunice, you've got a three-run lead. You can kind of force the action a little bit. Johnson hasn't shown that he's got any kind of move to first, so we'll keep our eye on that. Pitch is swung on and grounded back to the mound. to second for one, and the first on the run for two. One, six, three. Nicely turned by Johnson Dowdy. And the first baseman for the Crowley gents tonight, Chance Andrapont. But Dowdy was a little bit slow to get over there at the bag and made it a nice adjustment. Got that throw to first base quickly as soon as he caught the baseball. And there's two down in the bottom of the second. He had a nice scoop over there at first by Andrapont, but Johnson really needed that. You're in trouble. You walk the number nine hitter to lead off the inning. And just like that, uh, you get a 1-6-3 and two down. That ball is grounded by Abbott on one big hop to the first baseman, Andrapon. He fields it and touches the bag for the out. So looked like the Bobcats were going to put together a little rally, but it was quickly diffused in the inning. No runs for Eunice, no errors, no hits, and no men left. We played two. The score, Eunice three, Crowley nothing. This is KJJB Supersports. Okay, sir, on this lie detector test, the right answer gets you, and a wrong answer gets you. Liar. You work for a car dealer who competes with Cajun Country Autoplex? Yes, I do. Fine, and you sell quality O's, GMC, Pontiac, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Jeep, or less, just like Cajun Country Autoplex? That's right. Liar. Uh, I mean, we try to. Liar, liar. Like Cajun Country Autoplex, you have a great selection of over... Do. Liar. Uh, I mean, sometimes we do. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Cajun Country Autoplex, 1700 East Laurel Avenue on Highway 190 in Eunice. Surgery is not to be taken lightly. A competent physician and a state-of-the-art facility like American Legion Hospital can make having surgery a lot less fearful. Many surgeries today are performed with lasers, under microscopes a lot more efficient. American Legion Hospital has the latest surgical equipment for your doctor and a caring staff of professionals for you to speed along your recovery. When surgery is recommended, come to American Legion Hospital, Medicadiana's regional medical center. In the bottom of the second, Michael Johnson of Crowley faced the number nine hitter of Eunice, Bubba Olivier, to lead off the inning. Now he is the number nine hitter, and he will face Eunice's pitcher, Chris Hamus, who so far has done an outstanding job through two innings, striking out two and establishing excellent control of both his fastball and his curveball. Yeah, he's been able to throw it exactly where he wants to through the first two innings. Of course, that's only two. There's a lot of ball game to play. And uh, if he can come out and have a great third inning and a fourth inning, uh, he's, he's going to roll because he's giving his, his team right now uh, exactly what they need. They need excellent starting pitching. That's where the whole thing starts, and right now he's on top of his game. And as we mentioned, he does have two shutouts to his credit already this season. Hamus is ready on the mound. He looks in for the sign from McKeever. Here's the wine in the first pitch at the top of the third. Fastball a little bit high, and it's 1-0. But no question about Hamas heaving it up there tonight. Looking in, 1-0 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed, and he blew it right by him, and the count evens at 1-1. One one. Well, if you're Crowley, you know that the ball's going to be right around there. You might as well go up there hacking. And that's what they've been doing. Yeah, they're being aggressive up there. They just can't connect. That curveball fooled Johnson. He swung well over it. One ball and two strikes. We've had a host of celebrities tonight in the press box, and now LSUE's head coach for the fall of 99, actually beginning the program, David Russo's up here. That one-two pitch was almost swung out. Now the count evens at two and two. He's been recruiting all the town out here, at least viewing all the town, perhaps trying to recruit it all. I wouldn't blame him. We have an excellent product in Louisiana and southwest Louisiana. Great baseball out here. Two balls and two strikes. Here's the wind by Hamas and the pitch. Fastball on the inside corner, and that is another called third strike for Chris Hamas. He's got three in the game, and what can you say about this guy that we haven't said already, Steve? Not much. It's just what he's done. He came back, started the, the at-bat with a couple of fastballs, uh, broke a nice curveball over the inside corner that Johnson couldn't catch up with, and then that fastball, he had no chance. Pappy Morgan flew to the first baseman, Brennan Bertran, in foul territory, and he is now the hitter. Hamas winds. The pitch, 
Curveball stays high. One ball and no strikes. <laughs> Hamus ready. He's a quick worker, and that really helps your defense. Of course, he hasn't needed much defensive help with the strikeouts he's registering. 1-0 is low, and it's 2-0. You can tell when a pitcher gets in a groove like this, he just wants the ball back, get to the rubber, and throw it as fast as he can. Like you said, that really helps the defense. They stay into the game. They're on their toes the whole time. 2-0 delivery. Here it is. Fastball swung on, and he tipped it foul. Counts now 2-1. And, and he is challenging these hitters. Down 2-0. He said, hey, I'll throw you my best fastball, Pappy. Let's see if you can hit it. And he just tipped it. Now he's awaiting the two-ball, one-strike pitch, and here it is. Fastball swung on and fouled back, and the count evens at two and two. Morgan was right on that swing, however. He sounds, it seems like he's getting his timing down a little bit, but now you got to watch out for that nasty curveball. He could throw it here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Curveball swung on and hit high in the air into shallow left field. The shortstop Olivier is out, but the left fielder Myers will have it, and he had him totally off balance on that swing, and there's two down. Yeah, he swung that one. He ended up swinging from his ankles because he thought it was a fastball, had to golf it, and got underneath of it for an, an easy out. And uh, what, what more can you say? He's really cruising right now. We have a left-hander warming up, number seven for Crowley. We'll try to get his name. He's not on our roster here, but we'll see if we can get a name for you. If he does come into the ballgame, pitch. Fastball is taken for a ball to Dowdy, who grounded to third in the first. <laughs> Ross awaits the one ball, no strike pitch. Here it is. Curveball, and that's taken for a strike. Belt high, count evens at one and one. You know, that's an off-speed pitch, but from up here, it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference in the speed. Maybe that's why it's so effective. 1-1 one, one curveball, and that is a little bit inside. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, you can't see the action on it from up here. It's definitely a curveball, but it might. It looks like it might even edge towards the slider just how hard he's throwing it. Yeah. 2-1 pitch is taken for a ball. It's 3-1. and one. Of course, when he really rears back and throws it like that, I guess you can. <laughs> that's when you can tell the difference in speeds, yeah. and he's mixing it up excellently. And the 3-1 pitch is taken for a strike on the inside corner at the knees, and it's 3-2. and two. Ross thought he had a walk there. Chris Hamas is yet to walk a hitter. 3-2 pitch. Grounded on a couple of hops to the third baseman, Davila, and for the second time in this ballgame, Lance throws out Ross. Nothing doing in the top of the third for the Gents, and after two and a half, Eunice 3, Crowley nothing on KJJB Supersports. When it comes to fine quality furniture and appliances at down to earth hometown prices, no one does it better than Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. Ove has just received a new shipment of living room furniture and a style and color sure to match your decor and all at affordable prices. For furniture and appliances, make your next stop Cormier Furniture and Appliances, 611 East Laurel, the home of free delivery, low prices and 90 day free financing. Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. A lot of people are fixing up their old homes rather than buying new ones. It's a great investment. When you improve your home, you improve the quality of your life. The first step is to stop by our bank and visit with one of our loan officers. We're an equal housing lender. Try Parish Bank. Member FDIC. Move to the bottom of the third, and Donnie Bollock will be the leadoff hitter. Now, the question is, with a left-handed pitcher, Johnson still on the mound, will Donnie bat from the left side or the right side? He was hit by a pitch the first time, so it's a guessing game at this point. He is warming up uh, swinging left-handed, so that might be an indication. I have heard the theory, and uh, I, it, it might work. Some, some guys prefer to see the left-hander from the left side if they're capable of, of hitting from both sides. And simply because you can see the ball coming at you if it's a breaking ball because it's coming from the same side. Some guys like to hit right-handed pitchers from the right side. So that switch hitter thing, just to see the breaking ball coming into you instead of away from you, uh, works most of the time. But some guys see the ball better, and that could be the case. 
Well, I remember when Brian McRae was with the Chicago Cubs, and he had a lot of trouble with Tom Glavin's circle change. He decided to start swinging from the left side, and it helped him out. And a lot of people haven't been able to figure out that Tom Glavin of the Atlanta Braves actually struggles more against left-handers than he does against righties. And it has a lot to do with where that ball's released. That's just solidifying your point, basically. Here's Donnie Bollock. Either that or a real good guess. <laughs> Here's the wine in the first pitch to Donnie. Fastball is lined into the right field corner, and that is fair. No, it's called foul. I thought it was fair. We had the fair signal from the first base coach, Coach Fenske out there, but the umpire called it foul. Well, I thought it I thought it threw dust from here. It looked good. I thought it was a fair by good Let me tell you, I think the ball was hit so hard that the umpire actually didn't see it. That, that ball was definitely smoked, but I, I didn't even think it was really that close, but uh, that's why we're up here. Well, Donnie, will you hit those liners with some less fervor on them so the blue can see them there? Because that was a shot. Oh, one pitch now. That swung on and grounded off the end of the bat towards the shortstop. They'll never make a play. That's an infield hit. Doty had it go under his glove, but Donnie Bollock was running full speed through the base, so it will not be an error. He wouldn't have been able to throw him out anyway. Yeah, the exact opposite. He just smoked one down the right field line and kind of got the little cue shot out the end of the bat out towards shortstop. It, it would have been a tough play either way. Uh, he ends up at first base either way. It's an infield single. So same result, and that, that's, that's baseball. You, you rope the ball about as hard as you can hit it, it's a strike, and then you get a little number like that and you get a base hit. You're right. That is baseball, man. That is baseball. Here's Lance DeVille. Fly to center in the first. We're in the bottom of the third. Bobcats three. First result. That ball is grounded on three hops to Doty. Nice play. Knocks it down. Throws to second for the force out. The throw back to first. Gets by the first baseman, Andropont, but DeVille is not going anywhere. Six to four in the book. And credit Doty with that one because that ball was hit very sharply on the ground and he stayed with it. Yeah, he, he kind of bobbled it a little bit, but he kept his head, kept his composure, got down on the ball and did the important thing, got the lead runner and got the out. So, it, you know, if he bobbles it, if he tries to rush it, who knows, he throws that ball uh, into right field. You've got runners at second and third with no outs, but he, he just he kept his head and he made the right play. Here's Rocky McKeever stretching the pitch. Fastball is lined into left field. That's a base hit. Fielded on one hop by half power. Throws it back quickly into the infield. And the runners are now on first and second. And again, this pitcher Johnson has not shown too much ability to locate the balls in the corners. He's just leaving it out over the plate. And Chad Richard is warming up in the right field bullpen. McKeever out of the game. And I believe that's T-Bird, the man they call T-Bird over there for Eunice running. I know his last name is Joe Bear, Brian Joe Bear. Oh, no, that's uh, Corey Pettigo, excuse me. That's Corey Pettigo at first. Bubba Gotro, the hitter. Runners on first and second. He awaits the first pitch. Fastball in the inside corner, a strike. This could be the make or break at bat right now out on the hill for Johnson. First and second with one out if he can somehow work the ground ball, get out of the inning, still only down three to nothing. He's but allowed five hits to this point. If he gives up a hit here, he's going to be in some serious trouble. We might see Richard if he does give up a hit. Ross lays down the fingers. The stretch by Johnson, 1-1. Swung on and lifted a right field, tailing towards the foul line, and that ball is caught. A shoestring catch out there, an excellent play. And moving to third is DeVille. But a great play out there with that shoestring catch by Marcus Matlock. That ball looked like it was headed possibly for the right field corner, just kept tailing away from the right fielder, and he got on top of the baseball. Yeah, I thought, I thought he had no chance in the world to catch that ball. He came out of nowhere and as you mentioned, made the catch off his shoestrings and, and running away from him. And at first it looked like the ball might have gotten by him, but he made the great catch. Uh, the runner advances from second to third, but with two outs, that doesn't really kill you. And, and that's an excellent defensive play, and you might ball game. You're right, because Eunice could have broken open the game on that one. But they're faced with a two-out situation. On third is Lance. On first is Pedigo, and the batter is Brennan Bertrand. The three-sport athlete, the senior. Runner going from first. Johnson steps off the mound. 
Now he's going to run towards him, throw it to short. Now breaking for the plate is Lance. The throw to the plate is low. And the man is going to be out. And let me tell you, Duhon tagged him extremely hard on the helmet. And the Bobcat players don't like that at all. And these umpires are having a discussion. Let's see if this inning is over or not. That throw was low. Duhon was blocking the plate. And did you see some dirty play out there at all, uh, Steve? I don't like to accuse people of dirty play. I'll just say that it looked like he hit him a little unnecessarily hard on top of the head. Flipped him entirely upside down. Uh, he clearly had the plate blocked. Clearly made the, the play was going to be an out. Uh, and excellent. He, hit, he hit him extremely hard. Yeah, it was an excellent fundamental play by Duhon, but no, no need to hit the ball player on top of the helmet that hard with his glove. And let's see if the inning's officially over. Right now, Crowley's back in the dugout, and right. both umpires are walking over towards the Crowley dugout, perhaps issuing a warning to Duhon. Let's take this timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds, Buck. 30-second timeout on KJJB Supersports. Street Designs of Crowley on the Crowley Eunice Highway, three miles north of Crowley, is the home of super professional window tinting, lettering, banners, custom stripping, and the home of the coolest and largest selection of accessories in this area. Big and his staff have this area's fastest growing auto specialty shop, including an all new showroom. The Cat Daddy, that's Street Designs, three miles north of Crowley on the Crowley Eunice Highway where they have the coolest stuff in town for cars and trucks. Call 788-0554. You were scoring on that last play, 1-6-2, to six to two, as the pitcher Johnson threw it to the shortstop, Doty, who fired it home low to Duhon, who blocked the plate very nicely, fielded the ball on the short, on the short hop, I should say, and then aggressively tagged Lance DeVillier. But that's baseball. And now we move on to the top of the fourth. And guess who's in the batter's box? Brent Duhon. Let's see what Hamas throws him on the first pitch. Fastball. And that one is called for a strike. Got the outer portion of the plate. Well, Duhon got over there and got the equipment off, got out into the on-deck circle about as fast as you can see a catcher do it. You're right. That's why we only took a 30-second break. 0-1. Curveball is swung on and lifted into right field. Abbott is ranging over. It's over his head all the way to the fence. It bounces over the fence. And that's an automatic double. So Brent Duhon with the first Crowley hit of the game. So not only did he do some talking with his glove, but right there with his aluminum bat. Yeah, that was, that was a great piece of hit. And he just took the, the ball where it was pitched. And it, he roped that ball out to right field. Uh, no chance out there in right field for Abbott to catch up to it. Bounces over the fence. What do you do? That's the first hard hit ball of the night for Crowley. And here's Marcus Matlock. <laughs> Matlock flew to second in the first. Takes a practice swing. Now another. He waits. The pitch. Fastball a little bit inside. It backed him off the plate. And it's 1-0. and And this is the first chance we've really gotten to see Hammonds, how he responds to, to giving up the first real hard hit uh, ball uh, in the game. And as we mentioned, just missing once again. So it doesn't look like he's rattled his cage too much. He had retired eight of the last nine batters. Look at that clay just picking up out there. That ball is grounded up the middle for a base hit. Newhall around third. He's being held up. Runners will be on the corners, and that's a second consecutive hit. Once again, another good piece of hitting. That ball taken straight back up the middle. Uh, there was no chance out there for the shortstop uh, i got to say this again, Olivier, Olivier, Olivier. Olivier to, to get to the ball, but a nice, strong throw by Bollock. Kept the runner at third, runners at the corners, uh, nobody out. So now it's Crowley's turn to see what they can do, maybe get somebody moving, but down three to nothing, I'd say you got to see what, uh, what you can do right here from the box. The tying run at the plate is Keith LeBlanc. Nobody out, runners at the corners. Eunice leads three to nothing. The pitch, curveball, that's a strike. Letter high, it's 0-1. Yeah, a couple of fastballs been hit hard, so Hammonds comes back with the uh, Hammonds, excuse me, comes back with the, the breaking ball first pitch strike, and that's an excellent piece of pitching right there. On deck is Josh Hoffpower, LeBlanc grounder to short. Throw back to first after that fake throw to third, and people say that doesn't work a lot in baseball. Uh, it's kind of outdated, but uh, you never know. 
You see it. You see it more and more. I think is why people say it doesn't work. Will Matt Lockby going from first to throw back, and he's back in plenty of time. A play you don't see often, however, is the pitcher from the right side actually throw the ball to third base. You do that, that once. That is or, true. You do that once or twice, and that rock step over to first might work. No balls and one strike. Hamus stretches. Hamus delivers. In the dirt, gets away from McKeever. The runner will go to second, breaking for the plate, and that ball is thrown high, and he's safe. They had a chance at Duhon. Now the runner going to third. He will slide in safely. Duhon scores. Matlock all the way to third. That's a very expensive wild pitch. And a good throw home. He might have had the runner at the plate, but uh, it would have taken a perfect throw. Uh, coming clear around from first to third is, is the other runner. So now it not only is it 3-1, to one, but you got another runner in scoring position at third base with nobody out. And Hamas in the first real trouble that he's had. And we're going to have to see if he can dig his way out. On the board, it says one ball and one strike. I have one and two, so we'll check the count in a second. Nonetheless, it's three to one. Hamas stretches with a man at third and the delivery. Swung on and fisted to the right side. Bertrand in foul territory has it, and there's one down. That's a big out. A big out. You get the first out of the inning. All he has to do is put the ball on the ground, basically, and it's a three to two ball game, but you get him to pop out and to the infield. It's about as perfect as you can get. The only other way you can get that out is a strikeout. So a uh, uh, good break there for Eunice. Hamas has been very balanced. He struck out three men, induced three ground balls, and four pop-ups. The stretch, throw to third. Back standing easily is Matlock. Josh Hoffpower, as we told you a second ago, struck out looking back in the second. As the train comes roaming through the back of North Park Field. If you can't hear that, folks, you're absolutely deaf, because I hear it through the headsets. Hear what? <laughs> Hoff power. He's got a very wide stance. Look at that. The pitch fouled off. You wonder how he can generate any power when he hits the baseball. Well, a lot of times it, de it depends on your stride, but when you spread yourself out, what you do is you force yourself to cut down the swing. All the power comes through your hips, so if he just picks up that front foot and keeps it basically come down the same spot, you can still generate the power, but the main thing you're doing is cutting down your swing and, and putting the ball in play, which is what they need right now. Oh, one pitch. Curveball, and that, did it hit the batter or not? Apparently it hit the batter, but he made no attempt to get out of the way, and that's a rule in high school baseball that if you're hit but make absolutely no attempt to get out of the way of the baseball. And the home plate umpire even say he kind of put his arm into it. Yeah, so let's see if this is called a strike. It should be. Yeah, I believe it's 0-2. Our signal here is being somewhat affected by those trains passing through, but they should be done in about an hour looking from this <laughs> view. <laughs> I wonder if it's heading back to Cali, I could hop it. You ever hop a train? Never done it. Never done it. And you know, that's sad that I haven't done it because when you consider that loving the sport of baseball, that's what they used to do in the old days, I should at least give that a shot. Yeah, you got to experience that kind of thing. Run your horizons. Now there's a discussion between the Crowley head coach and the home plate umpire as to what happened on that particular play, but home plate umpire said, hey, he leaned into the baseball. No balls and two strikes. Well, everybody came back with a smile on their face, so. Well, actually, it's one and one. Let's clarify that. So it's not a hit by pitch, but it's not a ball. It's not a strike either. One, one pitch. Here it is. Swung on, lifted in the air. That should score the run. That is way back to right field. Abbott to the track, and he's got it crashing against the wall. Excellent play by Abbott. If he took one more step, perhaps it would have been gone. That drives in the runner from third hop power, but the out is recorded. There's two down. And talk to me about the wind. I mean, it is yeah, really that, swirling out there, and the baseball's carrying, especially towards the right side of the outfield. Yeah, that's a very tough play out there. Abbott did a great job. Uh, not only do you have the wind, but as an outfielder, you're always aware where's that fence once you start turning your back to it. He did a great job. He concentrated on the ball. He smacked into the fence but held on to the ball. 
Uh, just a nice play, but the run comes across. Curveball is swung over and missed by Chance Andropon, and he was totally unfazed. Despite the fact he's a freshman, he's a very mature one. And this guy's going to play about 50 games this season. He's on an 11-0 Eunice High freshman team, and of course this one is 15-4. Pretty good winning percentage, the pitch. Fastball swung under it and missed. No way he's going to catch up to that. McKeever was almost standing when he caught the baseball at 0-2. Going back to that last at bat, you want to credit Hoff. He did a good piece of hitting, once again taking the ball to the right side and driving it deep, and he gets the run in. Curveball is tipped at the plate and fouled off a little bit to the right, so he stays alive. Now, Andropon hit that fly ball into short right center field that the second baseman, Mike Fontenot, was under, but he simply dropped it. In an 0-2 hole, the pitch. Fastball high and outside. Count is 1-2. and two. John Beltran with Steve Capini here from North Park Field. If you just joined us, welcome to scores. Eunice 3, Crowley 2. A one ball, two strike count to Andropon. The pitch, curveball, swung off balance and hit in the air to second base. And Fontenot catches that one. That was in short right center field, but that time he made sure that that baseball was going to stay inside of his glove. The dent, the gents, I should say, put a dent into the Eunice lead in the inning. There were two runs on two hits, no errors, and no men left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The score, Eunice 3, Crowley 2 on KJJB Supersports. It's one of Acadiana's finest flower shops with some of the most creative florists in this area. It's Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F in Crowley. Mike and Tootie are waiting to create that special arrangement for that special person on that special day. Call Aurora Flowers and Gifts at 783-2224 and they'll create something special for you or one of your loved ones. Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F, where beautiful things happen every day. Looking for the services of a professional shoe repair shop? Look no further than Hugh Paul's Boot and Shoe Repairs. Dana Hugh Ball has won several awards for her work. And all repairs are made by Hugh Balls, from new heels and soles to rebuilding shoes. Dana even re baseball gloves. Ladies, take advantage of our special offer. Every fifth set of heels we put are free. Your shoes will last a lot longer when you trust them to Dana Hugh Ball, an award-winning cobbler. At Hugh Ball's Boot and Shoe Repairs, 901 North Parkinson and Crowley, call 783-7938. You have reached the bottom of the fourth, folks, if you're listening to us here from North Park Field in Eunice with the Bobcats leading the Gents 3-2 to two, and here to call the action for you for the next inning and a half is Steve Capini. Oh, thank you very much, John. We're going to lead it off with the Bobcats. They're going to send up Mike Fontenot to start things off. Fontenot playing second base. Well, let's correct that. Brennan Bertrand, who was the hitter when uh, the you're right. was thrown out at home plate, so I apologize so for that. Bertrand will be the batter. Seven, eight, nine hitters here in the inning for Eunice. They lead this one by a score of three to two. Still out there on the hill is Michael Johnson for Crowley. The first pitch is a fastball swung and cued at the plate. It'll be a no ball and one strike count. Right now, no official at bat in the ball game for Bertrand as he walked back in the first inning. Johnson, after a rough couple of first innings, has settled down. Kept his club in it after a three-run first. There's a swing and a foul ball off to the right side. Giving chase over the right side is the first baseman who gloves it. And a nice catch over there at first by Chance Andre Pont for the first out of the inning. So as we just mentioned, it was a rough go in the first inning for Johnson as he gave up the three runs to Eunice since then. It's kind of settled down. And there's one gone here in the home half of the fourth. Now Chris Hamus for Eunice, Steve, has been very successful and getting those hitters of Crowley off balance and hitting some of those fly balls. And Johnson just did it on that particular pitch. So maybe he's learning from some of Hamus's deliveries. That's going to bring up second baseman Mike Fontenot. 0 for 1 in the ballgame. Struck out back in the first. Johnson's first delivery is a fastball high and away for ball one. The left-hander digging in. He's working quickly now. As he comes to the play with the fastball, this one swung and fouled straight back to the screen to even up the count at a ball and a strike. As we mentioned, Fontenot playing second base tonight. He's had a couple of adventures out there with some short pop flies. But he did make the play to end the top half of the inning. 
one ball, one strike count. Johnson in his delivery to the plate. Breaking ball and a check swing. The ball is low, and Fontenot was able to hold up, so the count runs now to two and one. As we mentioned, the wind's been gusting on and off all night long, and it seems to have settled a little bit, but just as we said, I'm sure it's going to start blowing again. Johnson once again, the delivery. Here's a fastball swung on it, chopped out towards second base. Tough play. It's going to short hop and roll into right field. So on at first is Fontenot on the error, as it was a tough play for Brock Hawley. Kind of caught in between hops. And Fontenot reaches first base on the error. That was your typical Baltimore chop, and if you don't react once that ball comes right off the bat and played on the true hop, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. You've got to come charging in on that right away. So how are we scoring that, Steve? That would be an E4, Okay. I believe. Oh, yeah. Johnson in the stretch to the belt, comes home with the delivery, and once again a chop foul at the plate is Bubba Olivier standing in, the shortstop. He is also uh, no at bat as yet officially as he walked in the second inning. Runner at first, one man gone. We're in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Eunice three and Crowley two. Johnson left-hander once again out of the stretch to the belt. The fastball is low and the count even up at one and one. Fontenot over at first following the error. He's got a a decent lead over there. Johnson hasn't really shown that he can hold runners on. As he kicks and comes home, a fastball catches the inside corner. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. We've seen one throw over there from Johnson, and it didn't really fool anybody on his move. Even though his move has not been impressive to first, he's clearly a different pitcher now facing these Eunice hitters. He's gained a lot more confidence than in the early innings. Olivier digs in and takes this fastball down low once again. As the count will even up at two balls and two strikes. And that one didn't miss by much. You talked about a pitcher who's starting to throw well. When they don't miss by much, you know he's right around the strike zone. Decent lead over there by Fontenot. There he goes away from first. The curveball is taken up high. The throw down to second is not in time. And Fontenot has stolen second base. As Olivier took the curveball, just missing to run the count full. That's a huge stolen base out there for Fontenot. Gives, them a, uh, gives Eunice... A runner in scoring position with only one man out. And Brent Duhon made an excellent throw. It was a bullet out there. However, as you mentioned, Johnson doesn't have a great move to first, and he has a slow delivery towards home plate. They got a big jump off him. Here's a chance for Olivier to knock in a run. He takes a fastball just on the inside corner, a cold strike three. And Olivier turns and comes back to the dugout, and a huge strikeout for Michael Johnson. Now with two men out, and he's going to go back to the top of the Unis lineup and face Derek Myers. Myers, one for two in the ball game, doubled and scored a run in the first. As the first pitch to him is a fastball up high, and then in the second inning, he grounded into a 1-6-3 double play. That was actually the deflection off the pitcher to the shorts. Right, right. Fontenot away from second base, two men out, home half of the fourth. The 1-0 pitch is a curveball, nice stop back there once again by Duhon. As that ball caught a little bit of dirt, the count goes to 2-0. It is the Bobcats 3 and the Gents 2. Once again, Johnson to the plate. Fastball swung on and fouled into the dirt. And the count now 2-1, and it looked like Myers got the pitch he wanted. He sat on the fastball in the 2-0 pitch, but... Uh, couldn't do anything with it. Well, it looked like he swung just a little bit too hard, pulled his head, and that's why he only got a piece of the baseball. But the count is still in his favor at 2-1. and one. Once again, Johnson stares down. Gets a sign from Duhon, comes to his belt. Checks a runner at second. We've got uh, a pickoff attempt back at second base. Is breaking to the bag with second baseman Brock Hawley. Let's talk about this, Steve. Is there a need for him to throw over there knowing that he's pitching a lot better than he did in the first inning and his move is not impressive and he's already had a couple of problems trying to pick off runners. Yeah, in my personal opinion, it's absolutely unnecessary, but uh, as here's a breaking ball once again in the dirt and once again another nice block by Duhon. But I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of agreeing with you, John, that uh, he's in a rhythm. He's, he, he's uh, Obviously, I don't think Fontenot's going to steal third base with two outs. 
Uh, you never know, however, but uh, break up his rhythm. And as we mentioned, uh, a tough attempt. He almost threw into center fielder early into the ball game. Here's the pitch, a fastball. This one swung, wrapped out towards right field, giving chase, looking up, and this ball is gone. A two-run shot for Derek Myers as he takes the 2-2 pitch deep to right, and that gives Eunice a 5-2 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Simply hitting the ball where it's pitched, taking advantage of that swirling wind towards right field. Myers did all that, and the Bobcats have that three-run lead right back. When he first hit that ball, it looked like he roped it on a line out there to right, and Matlock gave chase like he was going to catch right up to it, but uh, the ball just kept sailing and clears the field out there and right, and a huge two-run shot by Myers. Cushions Eunice lead up to three. They now lead five to two. You know, this is kind of unfair, Steve. You've been here a little bit more than two days. You've already called a home run. The biggest play in baseball. Yeah, Next will be right. the... Uh, the slam dunk, the reverse slam, and then the uh, the touchdown. Now there's a pitching change for the Crowley Gents. We'll take this 90-second timeout and tell you about it when we come back. This is KJJB Supersports. Okay, sir, on this lie detector test, the right answer gets you, and a wrong answer gets you. Liar. You work for a car dealer who competes with Cajun Country Autoplex? Yes, I do. Fine, and you sell quality O's, GMC, Pontiac, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Jeep, or less, just like Cajun Country Autoplex? That's right. Liar. Uh, I mean, we try to. Liar, liar. Like Cajun Country Autoplex, you have a great selection of over 75 vehicles in stock? We do. Liar. Uh, I mean, sometimes we do. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Cajun Country Autoplex, 1700 East Laurel Avenue on Highway 190 in Eunice. Are you in the market for a new Kawasaki motorcycle? Maybe thinking about a go-kart for fun for the entire family or looking forward to summer with a new jet ski? Then make the first turn. To first turn of Crowley, that is. You'll find a great selection of outdoor fun from ATVs to motorcycles. For sales, service, parts, and accessories, stop in at first turn of Crowley. 525 Crowley Rain Highway in Crowley or give them a call at 788-1818. When it comes to fine quality furniture and appliances at down-to-earth hometown prices, no one does it better than Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. Ove has just received a new shipment of living room furniture and a style and color sure to match your decor and all at affordable prices. For furniture and appliances, make your next stop Cormier Furniture and Appliances, 611 East Laurel, the home of free delivery, low prices, and 90-day free financing. Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. And we're back as the new pitcher is going to be Josh Hoffpower for Crowley High. The right-hander out on the hill. His first delivery is a ball to Carl Abbott. Abbott standing in from the left side, and the 1-0 pitch is a fastball swung on and missed. And the count evens up at 1-1. One one. Abbott in the ball game, 1-2. One Singleton scored back in the first and then popped out to the first baseman in inning number two. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch, and fastball once again swung and foul back to the screen. And uh, you can see a little bit of change of pace in Josh Hoffbauer as he's really getting the ball up to the plate in a hurry. Hoffbauer, who was playing left field, we're going to try to get the changes for you as soon as we can. I believe Michael Johnson just switched positions with him. The curveball swung on and grounded towards third. That's going to be fielded and thrown on to first in time as a nice play by third baseman Keith LeBlanc. Guns his man, and that will do it here in the home half of the fourth. But Eunice gets two runs on one hit. There was no errors and nobody left. At the end of four innings of play, it is Eunice five and Crowley two here on KJJB Super Sports. Surgery is not to be taken lightly. A competent physician and a state-of-the-art facility like American Legion Hospital can make having surgery a lot less fearful. Many surgeries today are performed with lasers, under microscopes a lot more efficient. American Legion Hospital has the latest surgical equipment for your doctor and a caring staff of professionals for you to speed along your recovery. When surgery is recommended, come to American Legion Hospital, Medicadiana's regional medical center. 
street designs of Crowley on the Crowley Unit Highway, three miles north of Crowley, is the home of super professional window tinting, lettering, banners, custom stripping, and the home of the coolest and largest selection of accessories in this area. Dick and his staff have this area's fastest growing auto specialty shop, including an all new showroom, the Cat Daddy. That's street designs, three miles north of Crowley on the Crowley Unit Highway, where they have the coolest stuff in town for cars and trucks. Call 788-0554. And welcome back as we head to the top half of inning number five. The Eunice Bobcats leading the Crowley Gents by a score of 5-2. to two. The big blow coming in the bottom of the fourth inning on the two-run homer by Myers. And Hamas once again able to work with a three-run cushion. He is going to face Brock Holly, Michael Johnson, and then back to the top of the order and Pappy Morgan to start the fifth inning. So Holly standing in. And the first pitch from the right-hander is a fastball. A big swing and a miss. And the count 0-1. Hawley, so far, uh, 0 for 1 in the ball game, struck out back in the second inning. As the pitch, breaking ball, and this one catches the outside corner, and the count goes to 0 and 2, and Hamas comes out on fire here well, to start re the fifth inning. He's reestablishing that command he had in the first three innings. Hamas with the wind, the 0-2 delivery, a fastball. And this one misses away. And the count of ball and two strikes. And you can tell that he's a very intelligent pitcher. Doesn't throw a gimme pitch on an 0-2. Hamas back with the 1-2 delivery, a breaking ball. This one stays up high. The count even up at 2-2. Two and two. So Eunice with that big three-run first inning. And then uh, pitcher Michael Johnson settled down, but... Uh, Gave up two more in the fourth. That is now a 5-2 lead for Eunice. Here's the 2-2 two -two delivery, a fastball, and this one misses downstairs. And the count runs full. So after a quick two strikes to uh, start the at-bat to Hawley, Hawley able to work the count full. And the payoff pitch. There's a fastball on the inside corner. Cold strike three, and down goes Hawley. Let me tell you something. Hawley might get thrown out of this game soon. That's the second time... He complained in that at bat, but this umpire from this vantage point has been extremely consistent. He's calling that inside corner fastball for both pitchers, actually for all three now. So should be nothing to beef about there. Well, that's going to bring up Johnson, but uh, I, I believe we had a change, and it looks like it is going to be Chad Richard standing in. So you had the left-hander, right, John? It's just a different left-hander out playing left field, I would assume now. That is Chad Richard. So Richard stands in from the left side, and the pitch is a fastball down low, and that runs a count to two balls and no strikes. So Richard coming in to play left field. As the right-hander deals, here's a 2-0 pitch swung and fouled off to the left side out of play, and the count goes to 2-1. So Richard getting his first at bat of the ball game with the 2-1 count and the pitch is a fastball missing down low and the count now runs to 3 and 1. We're in the top half of inning number 5. 5-2 five Eunice with the lead. And Ham is just recording the strikeout to start the inning. Here's the 3-1 pitch from the right hander and a breaking ball down low and in the dirt. So trotting down to first base with the walk is Richard. And we're going to go back to the top of the lineup for center fielder Pappy Morgan. Morgan 0 for 2 in the ball game. Popped out to uh, the first baseman in the first inning and then flew out to left in inning number 3. So Hamas is going to work from the stretch with the runner at first. Richard with the lead and Morgan standing in. Hamas to the belt. Kicks and throws. A fastball misses high and outside in the count 1-0 and, oh and this is the first little wild stretch we see from Hanemus here tonight. Two runs, two hits for Crowley tonight. Five runs, six hits for the Bobcats. Once again, Richard with the lead. Hamas with the 1-0 delivery. A fastball once again. This one swung on and fouled out of play off to the right side. He's and still the, humming that fastball up there. Yeah, the edge of the dugout saving a windshield over there. Yeah, Morgan could barely get around on that one. Just got a piece of it. 
and it landed on top of that building beyond the Crowley dugout. The count of ball and a strike, one man out, runner on first, five to two, Eunice with the lead. No hurricane threatened the area despite the heavy winds. Hamas to his belt, turns and fires over to first and back diving safely is Richard. Let's not start talking about uh, natural disasters, okay? Been here for only two days. I don't need to see one. Well, I lived through Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, so I think that's about the worst you can see in terms of a hurricane. This time the one-one pitch, a curveball, and it stays upstairs to count two balls and a strike. Richard gave a bluff like he was going to run on that, but uh, advanced nowhere, so he remains at first with the count two and one to center fielder Pappy Morgan. He's got a nice lead over there. And there's a turn quick and a throw and back just safely as Richard as Hamas with the quick move and not letting anything up on the throw over to first. Nearly caught Richard napping, but Richard able to get back in safely. Tonight, Chris Hamas has four strikeouts, all looking. Hamas comes home with the pitch, a fastball swung and pops straight up, and this one's going to get back and out of play. That'll even up the count at two and two. So Morgan and Hamas in a little bit of a battle here. The Blue Jays and the Green Demons tomorrow, St. Edmunds and Mamu. We won't have it for you on radio, but it will start here at 5 o'clock. There goes Richard. Hamas didn't even see him as this wall is grounded to third, up with it. And making a high throw, but a nice play over there. His third baseman, uh, Lance Devier. Devier. Devier, was close. But advancing clear from first base is Richard. As he was going on the pitch, Hamas didn't even see him. He had a good five-step lead before Hamas even threw the ball. Got to second base easily. The high throw over to first, allowing Richard to advance clear to third. But the out is recorded. It's the second out of the inning. And that's going to bring to the plate Ross Doty. As Hamas working from the stretch with the runner at third. And Hamas' first pitch is a fastball swung and fouled straight back to count 0-1. Doty has been able to pull the ball, but with no success. Yeah, a couple of ground outs to third. 0 for 2 on the night. I'm sure Hamas would, uh, wouldn't mind one more ground out. With two gone here in the top half of inning number five, Eunice holding on to a three-run lead. Here's the 0-1 pitch, a curveball, and it stayed up high, and it looks like Hamas might be struggling a little bit with that curveball. Doesn't look like he's got quite the bite that he had in the first three innings. Doesn't have that late snap, but still pitching very effectively and has not given up a run here in the fifth, and he's two strikes away from ensuring that that will not happen. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Hamas. A fastball swung on and missed. Forget the curveball, Steve. Yeah, he, he threw that one right by him. Yeah, Doty had no chance of catching up with that one. you got to be impressed Hamas. by this junior, Chris Hamas, tonight. The ball and two strikes. Hamas looking to get out of a, a mini tight spot, I guess. The 1-2 pitch swung on and tapped the third once again, but having a hard time picking it up. And making the throw late is third baseman Devier. Lance Devier. Devier. I'm, I think I'm, I'm never going to get that, that right. One. We'll work on that one. So Nonetheless, the runner from third, Chad Richard, scores, and that's a big error because now it's five to three. Yeah, well, we just talked about he grounded the third twice. That time it got through the legs and uh, a late throw, unable to get the runner, allowing. Richard to come in from third and score. So now it's Eunice five and Crowley three. Still two outs with the runner at first. And no RBI if you're scoring there. That's going to bring up Brent Duhon, the catcher. And you don't want to see this guy in this situation considering last time he nearly hit it out of the park. Yeah, Duhon one for one. He was hit by a pitch in the first but then doubled in a run and, uh, excuse me, doubled in and scored a run back in the fourth. As a fastball, a big swing and a miss in the count one and one. But that the ball that he hit back in inning number four was smoked. And now with Doty standing over at first with two outs, Duhon with a chance to do some more damage and try to draw Crowley that much closer. 
Turning a throw over to first and back in safely is Doty. Five to three is your score. The Bobcats leading the Gents top half of inning number five. Hamas taking some time staring down. Now comes to his belt. And the one-one delivery is a breaking ball. This one swung on and grounded slowly to short. This is going to be a tough play as I'm not on to first and not in time. Safe on the infield hit is Duhon. As Olivier had to make a tough play. He didn't think he could get the runner advancing to second. Had to make a long throw on a slow ground ball. And uh, the throw just late. Absolutely. That ball had eyes on it hitting the hole. And Bubba did all he could. And that throw is just a tad late. And now Marcus Matlock represents the go-ahead run. And he's the cleanup hitter on this team. So we assume that he does have some pop in that bat hitting with a slightly open stance. Yeah, the tying run over at first base. Runners at first and second. And the first pitch to Matlock is swung on a ground at the first, but fielding it nicely over there. And making the play is Bertrand. And Hamas gets out of the inning after only giving up the one run. But Crowley does get the one run. On one hit, there was one error and two runners left. At the end of four and a half innings of play, it is Eunice 5 and Crowley 3 here on KJJB Super Sports. If you want to use the equity in your home without refinancing your first mortgage, you have several choices. A traditional home equity term loan, a home equity line of credit, or a combination of both. A home equity loan or a home equity line of credit both offer the tax advantages of a home secured loan. We're an equal housing lender. Try Parish Bank. Member FDIC. Looking for the services of a professional shoe repair shop? Look no further than Hugh Paul's Boot and Shoe Repairs. Dana Hugh Ball has won several awards for her work. And all repairs are made by Hugh Balls, from new heels and soles to rebuilding shoes. Dana even resells baseball gloves. Ladies, take advantage of our special offer. Every fifth set of heels we put are free. Your shoes will last a lot longer when you trust them to Dana Hubal, an award-winning cobbler. At Hubal's Boot and Shoe Repairs, 901 North Parkinson in Crowley, call 783-7938. We move on to the bottom of the fifth. And the Eunice Bobcats hold a 5-3 to three lead over the Crowley Gents. They extended that lead with a two-run bottom of the fourth. That was courtesy of Derek Myers' two-run blast. And then the Gents scored one in the top half of this inning on an error by third baseman Lance DeVillier, allowing the runner from third, Chad Richard, to score. But the Bobcats, Steve, have the meat of their lineup up right now. Yeah, they're going to send up to the plate their three, four, and five hitters in Donnie Bullock, Lance DeVille. There you go. And Rocky McKeever. Got it? Well, you were like two for three. It's Bollock. But you've been saying that right. I think you might have had a Bullock in there. Oh, well. Well, this, this is a this, great challenge. This isn't it trying to get these names down? If you can do this, you can do anything. You know? DeVille's throwing me for a loop. I mean, it's just uh, I thought going to Mardi Gras was a challenge. That's nothing. <laughs> Pronouncing these names, if you're not a native... If you're not a Louisiana, is a challenge. I've gotten it down, I believe, after several months, after you, over a year, were, actually. You were telling me Richard, and I've been or I, I've been saying Richard. You tell me it's wrong. It's Richard. Right. So I apologize for that. I'll probably be doing a lot of apologizing. Anyway, back on the mound for the second inning of work is Josh Hoffpower for Crowley. The right-hander will be facing, as we mentioned, Donnie Bollock to start the inning. And the first pitch to Bollock is a breaking ball that stays up high for a count of 1-0. and oh. Bollock in the ball game, hit by pitch and scored in the first, and then he singled back in the third inning. So one for one for the center fielder. Here's the 1-0 pitch, and this is a fastball in the inside corner, and the count evens up at 1-1. One and one. This is a big hitter to retire in the inning for Hoffpower because of Bollock's speed. 22 out of 22 on the base pass in terms of stealing bases. Here's the 1-1 pitch and a breaking ball swung on. Belted into left field between short and third for a base hit. And that's the way to start the inning for Bollock is he just smoked that ball. Well, Hoffpower left a curveball hanging over the middle of the plate. Donnie simply showed his patience, waited on it, and smacked it. So a leadoff single for Bollock. He's now 2-for-2 two two in the ball game, and that's going to bring up Lance DeVille. 
just to give you an idea, in case you didn't hear it last week, of Donnie Bollock's talent, he just signed with the University of New Orleans last Saturday, so he'll be playing some Division I baseball, perhaps next year. He's got all the tools, a strong arm, great speed, can hit from both sides, can even pitch some, even though he probably won't be pitching at the next level. Now we've got, uh, looks like we've got a balk called on Hoff Power as he made a throw over to first, but uh, as he went back to the mound, it looks like uh, the second base umpire is saying he's turning his shoulder, but uh, he's saying he's doing it as he's peering in or he's in the set position. I'm not quite sure. I thought that when you were in the, the first position, you could turn as much as you wanted to. Apparently not, so advancing to second is Bollock. Now Hoff Power's pitch is swung on and fouled off to the right side out of play to count 0-1. Well, Donnie Bollock will do that to you. He's an intimidator, and even if Hoff Power didn't intend to turn over there. He was going to do it anyway with Bollock over at first. To be a flight out to center and then grounded out to second. <laughs> Excuse me, he reached back in the third innings. Here's a pickoff attempt to second base, but uh, Bollock back in safely. Yeah, he reached in a fielder's, fielder's choice. choice. So he's 0 for 2 in the ball game. 5-3, to three, Eunice leading this one. We're in the home half of inning number 5, but uh, the Bobcats looking for more. And here's the pitch. Curveball low and a nice stop back there once again by Duhon. He's had to dig a few out of the dirt tonight, and he's been equal to the task. This guy played American Legion baseball last summer and is an excellent baseball player. Nobody out. Runner on second, and DeVille looking to uh, get an insurance run for Eunice. Hoffpower apparently wants Duhon to go through the signs. Hoffpower once again to the plate, the 1-1 pitch, a fastball. This one swung on and popped straight up and off to the right, and it's going to get out of play. So now Hoffpower will be working ahead of ball and two strikes. Now I parked the car kind of far away, so it would get nailed here because there's been a lot of foul balls, and with that wind swirling towards the right, all these foul balls are landing over there. And they usually always seem to find the card to play-by-play -play guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yours isn't here, so I'm the only potential victim. Here's the 1-2 delivery. This one's swing and a miss at a ball up in the eyes of Devier. And he is retired and a big first out for Hoffpower here in the fifth. Well, Lance is usually a very selective hitter, but there he got a little bit impatient and went after a pitch that probably Wilt Chamberlain might have been might not have been able to hit. Well he's a basketball player. <laughs> well you're you're right about that <laughs> actually kidding, now that I thought about that. He's an ex basketball player. I think the man is about sixty years old now. That's gonna bring up Rocky McKeever. Catcher for Eunice is he comes in, he's batting uh, he Hit it to a 1-6-3, but he got an RBI back in the first inning and then singled in the third. And right now I'm sure he'd take another one with the runner in scoring position. That's Bollock out at second base with one out here in the home half of the fifth. Hoff power to his belt. The fastball swung on a cue towards first. That's going to get the runner to third base. But uh, recording the second out is first baseman Andre Pont. And so that's going to leave Eunice with only one out to work with. Two gone, runner at third. So a big out recorded by Hoffpower, however, advancing the runner. Well, that was an inside-out swing by McKeever trying to take the ball to the right side. And he did his job in terms of advancing Bollock 90 feet over the third base. But as you said, there's two down in the inning, and Bubba Gotro will now be responsible for driving in the run unless we have a wild pitch. Hoffpower is going to work from the windup, and he deals a fastball that's down low. And a count one ball and no strikes. Bubba Gotro stands in, and the 1-0 pitch from Hoffbauer. The fastball once again down low, and once again Duhon with a nice save back there. As you mentioned, a wild pitch gives one for two. He's got an RBI double back in the inning number one, and then he flew out to right field in the third. Here's a 2-1 delivery by Hoffbauer. Fastball swung on and lined foul. You can the swing. weirdest. Yeah. spots because it went directly parallel with where he's standing. Yeah. 
you cannot swing any later and hit the ball any harder. <laughs> Let's put it that way. That's one of the few times you're going to see that happen. Yeah. Either way, the count even up now at two and two. Runner at third with two gone here in the home half of inning number five. As Hoffpower stares in, this is a big out for him. And the 2-2 delivery is a fastball swung on and just getting a piece of it is Gotro to stay alive as he chops that one foul behind home plate. Big Bubba hanging in tough. He's a very strong hitter and an excellent man in this situation. Of course, his double, his RBI double back in the first was with two outs, so he's already shown the ability to be able to drive in a run in this similar type of situation. And the delivery from the right-hander once again in the dirt to run the count full. And, and all the piss pitches that the Hot Powers missed on have all been down low and in the dirt. So we'll see what he can do here. Count three and two. The speedy ball extending at third for the Bobcats. Josh Hoffpower, the big right-hander with the payoff pitch, a fastball, called strike three on the outside corner, and down goes Gotro. So Hoffpower able to pitch out of a small jam as Eunice gets no runs. They got one hit, no errors, and a runner left. And at the end of five full here in Eunice, it is the Bobcats five and the Gents three here on KJJB Super Sports. It's one of Acadiana's finest flower shops with some of the most creative florists in this area. It's Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F in Crowley. Mike and Tootie are waiting to create that special arrangement for that special person on that special day. Call Aurora Flowers and Gifts at 783-2224 and they'll create something special for you or one of your loved ones. Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F, where beautiful things happen every day. And we head back to inning number six, Unis five and Crowley three, and back for more play-by-play. -play. Here's Big Bad John. Thank you, Big Steve. Brennan Bertrand will be the first hitter when the Bobcats come up to the plate, but the Gents got to do it first here on the top of the sixth inning. And Keith LeBlanc, the fifth hitter, who is 0 for 2 on the night, he grounded to short in the second and flew to Brennan Bertrand in the fourth inning. Sending up the five, six, and seven hitters. The Bobcats hold a five to three lead. Chris Hamus has been excellent so far. Striking out four men, walking one, allowing just three hits. And those three hits by the three and four hitters. Two by Duhon, one by Marcus Matlock. One in the pitch, fastball way up high. And it's one and oh. Eunice trying to avenge an 8-7 loss earlier this season. Going for win number nine in a row, the pitch. Fastball right down Broadway, and the count's even at 1-1. One one. Or in Eunice, I guess you'd say right down 12th Street, since we're parallel to it. <laughs> Here's the wind, the 1-1 delivery. Curveball is swung on, chop back to the mound. The third of first is perfect by Chris Hamus, and there's one down in the inning. Hamus has had that one rough stretch... Uh, when he gave up those three runs, two or three runs at, uh, to Crowley earlier in the ballgame, but since has responded well. It seems like he's still throwing as hard as he was in the early parts of the ballgame. We mentioned earlier his curveball didn't look quite as crisp, but if he throws it where he wants to throw it, continues with this fastball, uh, he's still on top of his game with the two-run lead. Josh Hoffpower is the batter. He is 0 for 1, a sacrifice fly in the fourth. That was preceded by a strikeout in the second, and he takes the first pitch for a strike, and it's 0-1. And you also have to be impressed by Hamus's mechanics. That allows him to use those legs and throw extremely hard. Here's the wind. Oh, one pitch. Curveball is swung over and tapped foul right behind the plate. Count is now 0-2. Oh well, as you know, I'm new to the area. I haven't gotten to see Eunice play yet. But watching Hamus, I don't know if it's uh, something he does naturally or he's coached well. But as soon as he comes around with that left leg, he's picking up the catcher's uh, glove as soon as he possibly can so he's got his eye on that target almost his full wind up pitch curveball and he offered at it and McKeever will tag out Hoff power that should be a third strike in there I guess they're calling that a ball but it looked to me like he did offer at it well the home plate umpire looking for help down the first base line and his counterpart out there says no he did not go by the way I don't think Tad Richard lasted more than a couple of batters umpiring right. out at first base <laughs> 
We failed to mention that earlier, so he hasn't been out there the entire time, folks. One ball, two strikes to Josh Hoffpower. The pitch. Foul back. Count remains at one and two. He reached back for something there and really threw it hard, but uh, a good job up there staying on top of it with the two-strike count. Chris Hamus has been keeping hitters off balance all night. Trying to do the same here to Hoffpower. He's 0 for 2 on the night. But the pitch is high, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Right now, if you're the Crowley hitters, all you can basically do is look fastball and hope to adjust to the curveball. Because if you're up there guessing, you're going to be caught with uh, your shorts down. Yeah, let's, that's right. Let's see if he goes with the curveball right now. 2-2 two, two pitch. Fastball called strike three on the outside corner at the knees. Hoffpower didn't like that, but that's the fifth strikeout overall. All looking for the junior right-hander. There's two down, and here comes... Number 24, Chance Andropon. And Hamas has been right there all night long. If you're the Crowley hitters, you got to go up there and you got to start swinging the stick because, uh, as you mentioned, five strikeouts and all of them have been looking, I believe. And you, you, they've just got to start swinging the sticks and looking for that fastball earlier in the count if they have to. Andropon has flied twice to the second baseman. One was caught, the other one was dropped, and he takes the first pitch over for a strike. And that's another feature of of Hamas' pitching ability. He's been able to throw a, a first pitch strike to just about every hitter. Here's the 0-1. Curveball is grounded weakly to the second baseman. Fontenot ranges to his left, throws to first, and 1-2-3 here in the top of the six. We move on to the bottom of the six. The score, Eunice 5, Crowley 3. You're listening to Louisiana High School Athletic Association Baseball on KJJB Supersports. Okay, sir, on this lie detector test, the right answer gets you, and a wrong answer gets you. Liar. You work for a car dealer who competes with Cajun Country Autoplex? Yes, I do. Fine, and you sell quality O's, GMC, Pontiac, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Jeep, for less, just like Cajun Country Autoplex? That's right. Liar. Uh, I mean, we try to. Liar, liar. Like Cajun Country Autoplex, you have a great selection of over 75 vehicles in stock? We do. Liar. Uh, I mean, sometimes we do. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Cajun Country Autoplex, 1700 East Laurel Avenue on Highway 190 in Eunice. Surgery is not to be taken lightly. A competent physician in a state-of-the-art facility like American Legion Hospital can make having surgery a lot less fearful. Many surgeries today are performed with lasers, under microscopes a lot more efficient. American Legion Hospital has the latest surgical equipment for your doctor and a caring staff of professionals for you to speed along your recovery. When surgery is recommended, come to American Legion Hospital, Medicadiana's regional medical center. When I was a wiser man, I was in the insurance industry, and that's what the Bobcats will be looking for right now. Leading 5-3 to three in the bottom of the sixth inning. They scored three runs in the bottom of the first to take a 3-0 lead. Then Crowley cut into that with two runs in the top of the fourth. The Bobcats then got those runs back in the bottom of the fourth to make it 5-2. to two. However, Crowley cut into that lead slightly. It's 5-3, but Yuna still holds a comfortable lead. And they will send up the number seven, eight, and nine hitters, Bertrand, Fontenot, and Olivier. And those are three Louisiana last names, no doubt about it. Acadiana last names, Bertrand, Fontenot, Olivier, particularly in the city of Eunice. So you'll learn from this experience, certainly, Steve. Yeah, I've learned a lot already. I've just learned that guys up here talking Atlanta Braves baseball. You know, I'm no Braves fan, I'll admit that, but it's so nice to not hear people talk about Giants baseball. You don't know how refreshing that is. Oh, you mean the old New York Giants with Willie Mays? Uh, no, that's fine. Just don't say San Francisco Giants. Uh, i got to ask you a question after this first pitch to Brennan Bertrand, who tonight is 0 for 1. First pitch is fouled back. Looks like a little bun attempt. Yeah. And it's 0 and 1. Is the coldest winter you ever spent a summer in San Francisco? I've seen that uh, T-shirt, and yeah, I see the... people wearing blankets in the middle of July out at 3 Com Park. Well, let's just say this. I I would live five hours from San Francisco, so the only time I went there was to catch a ball game. And if you've ever been to Candlestick Park. Curveball is swung on and missed well out of the strike zone, and Brennan is behind in the count 0-2. If you've ever been to Candlestick Park, you can relate to what I'm about to say. It sucks. I, it, it is the worst place to watch a ball game, and I'll be glad when they get rid of it. Well, tell me how you really feel after the 0-2 <laughs> pitch. Fastball over the head of Bertrand. It's 1-2. No, it's, is, it, a, is it a much better just, football stadium? No, it, it's, it's, it's just a bad it's stadium. It's miserable period. to watch any In other kind words, of sports. 
Not to mention you have to watch the Niners and the Giants when you go there. Well, I don't think anything is worse than Tiger Stadium in Detroit for baseball. 1-2. Swung on. In the dirt. Missed. Duhon will have to throw out the runner Bertrand. He does a bullet to the first baseman Andropon. There's one down. And unless Crowley comes back in the top of the seventh, Bertrand will finish the night at 0 for 2. Yeah, it's imperative for Hoffpower to keep Eunice uh, off the scoreboard here in the home half of the sixth. Give Crowley a chance. Down two runs. You can't afford to be down anymore with the way that Hamas has been pitching tonight. Robbie Landrino will be the pinch hitter for Mike Fontenot. Landrino's only had two at bats in the season without a hit. So let's see, he can improve his average to 333, but he can't catch up with that first fastball by Josh Hoffpower, who's done a fine job for Michael Johnson. Yeah, he's done what he's had to do. He's, he's kept Eunice pretty much at bay. And he's another kid that's thrown pretty hard out there. Oh, one fastball. He swung on and barely got a piece of it. Fouled and back and off to the right, and it's 0-2, and, and he's just late on his swing. And perhaps the best medicine for him will be to choke up on that bat, shorten the swing, and maybe he'll be able to get some solid metal on it. Well, you can see him spreading out, and that's exactly what you want to do with two strikes is spread your stance and shorten up. Oh, and he swung at a pitch over his head. I mean, he couldn't hit that with an axe. Two consecutive strikeouts for Hoff Power. There's two down. Yeah, Hoff Power, kind of, he's, he's in a groove right now as well. We've talked about how Hamas has pitched. Hoff Power pitching uh, pretty well here this evening uh, for Crowley High School. And doing his job, he's one out away from uh, from keeping Crowley to a two-run game. The pitch, it hit Olivier, and he's on to first base. Got him right around the stomach area, it appeared, or maybe the left hip. I couldn't see it that well. It looked like it unbuckled his, his belt a little bit. Yeah, that, his shirt came untucked, caught him in the button area. So that's, that's one of the best places to get hit because it doesn't really hurt. Is, now, that, is that a myth? Or I guess it's right. Yeah, it doesn't hurt too much. No. Especially if you got a belly like mine and now Olivier is out of the ball game and Pedigo again is in the run he looks okay he did take a hard one yeah it looked like he got mostly jersey he's the closer on this ball club so if Hamas gets in trouble in the seventh expect to see Bubba Derek Myers is the hitter we all know what he found this is a very intelligent visit considering Myers has lasted bad a two-run homer that extended Eunice's one-run lead to three. Yeah, that's the shot in the ball game to right now, to this point. Now down to a two-run lead, at five to three. You know, it's always more impressive to see it when you hit a home run. Uh, it, in my mind, especially when you take it the other way, I don't care if the wind's blowing that way or not. To take a ball out to right field when you're a right-handed batter shows not only that you're a power hitter, but you're an intelligent power hitter. You know, almost anybody can pull the ball out of a ballpark, but when you see a kid. Take the ball out the other way. That shows you that the kid knows how to hit a baseball. And Derek Myers is one of those kids. We've seen a few shots out to right tonight. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball, low, one ball and no strikes. Well, head coach Scott Phillips had Pettigo running and placing him in scoring position. We'll find out. He might not even have to get the second base if Myers can uncork another one. Here's the 1-0 runner going. Fastball taken for a strike. The throng, strong throw to second, I should say, is late. And a stolen base for Pettigo, who had an excellent jump from first base, and he is in scoring position. And Myers facing a 1-1 count. Well, Duhon with the rocket behind the plate, but that's a heck of a steal there by Pettigo. He turned on the afterburners about a third of the way down. I thought he was going to get gunned, but uh, he was able to get in there safely, a little bit of speed. That throw was absolutely perfect by Brent Duhon. Nothing he could do about that. That was a stolen base off the pitcher, Hoff Power. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball is chopped slowly down third. If it stays fair, it won't. As the third baseman and the pitcher collide just a little bit. But if it stayed fair, that would have been a base hit. But it trickled foul. And Myers now faces a one-ball, two-strike count. Tonight, he is two for three. Obviously, the hitting star. Two RBI. A stolen base. He stole home the back end of a double steal. And that's the one that got Eunice on the board to get things going here tonight. Six total bases and three at-bats. Very impressive. One ball and two strikes. The senior looking to drive in another run. The pitch. 
inside, called strike three on the corner. Myers didn't like it, but that pitch has been called all night. For Eunice in the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left. We go to the seventh, folks, three outs away for the Bobcats. The score, Eunice five, Crowley three on KJJB Supersports. When it comes to fine quality furniture and appliances at down-to-earth hometown prices, no one does it better than Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. Ove has just received a new shipment of living room furniture and a style and color sure to match your decor and all at affordable prices. For furniture and appliances, make your next stop Cormier Furniture and Appliances, 611 East Laurel, the home of free delivery, low prices, and 90-day free financing. Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. We know you're in a hurry when you use the drive up, so we do our best to get you on your way as soon as we can. But there's always time to smile, say hello, and let you know we appreciate your business. Try Parish Bank, member FDIC, hometown people. Chris Hamus has been the master of the complete game this season. He is 5-1, and one, and he's three outs away from making it 6-1 and one as his infield convenes on the mound. Brennan Bertrand, the first baseman, Mike Fontenot, Bubba Olivier, Lance DeVillier, and, of course, Hamus himself. And the first hitter he'll have to face is a man who struck out twice tonight looking and has been unhappy with the umpire, Brock Holly, the pitch. Grounded slowly to third. DeVillier has it. The long throw across the diamond is high. Well over the head of Bertrand. And heading for second base is Holly. He will be in there standing. And that is an error on the third baseman, Lance DeVillier, his second of the ball game. And it was a simple case of not following through. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough play and a tough way to start for Eunice High because uh, with the two-run lead, you'd lead off batter now on second base with nobody out. Uh, lots of chances now for Crowley to do something with that runner out there. And as you said, just, just not following through, letting the ball get away from him. Speaking of errors by Lance, Chad Richard scored two innings ago on an error by DeVille off the bat of Ross Doty. First pitch is outside for a ball. Hopefully this won't demoralize Hamus, who's had an outstanding outing tonight. The stretch, the pitch, swung on and fouled off to the left side. And the count evens at one ball and one strike. On deck is Pappy Morgan. Eunice five, Crowley three, top of the seventh. Nobody out and a man on second for the Gents. Here's the stretch. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball stayed high and outside. Not much snap to it. And it's 2-1. and one. Hamus wants to work quickly. He looks in. He steps, he pitches. Fastball high, overthrowing. It's three and one. He's upset with himself. And now he, now's the time when it wouldn't be a bad idea for Hamish to just step off the mound, play with his cap a little bit, take some time, and try to battle back from this three one to count. He stretches. Here's the three one pitch. Strike two. That's a fastball, belt high. Now the count runs full. <laughs> so this could be the biggest pitch of the ball game right now. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the top of the seventh. Eunice leading by two, the pitch. Swung on and driven into left field. Derek Myers can't get to it. It's in the left center field gap. One run will score, and the tying run will end up on second base. It's 5-4 to four Bobcats. Nice piece of hitting out there by Richard. He just took that ball where it was, where it was pitched, out into the left center field gap, rolled clear to the wall, and, and uh, that scored the runner easily. And now Hamas in a little bit of trouble, and he's going to get a visit out there on the mound. Well, he's still throwing excellent baseball. Just the fourth hit allowed by Hamas. Let's see if this is a spot where he uses Bubble Olivier, but I think he's still uh, really throwing a masterful ball game. Well, right now it's still in his hands. It's 5-4. to four. Granted, Crowley uh, is threatening right now with the runner at second. Nobody out. But it is a one-run lead, and Hamas has, has been pretty well. Just needs to gather himself through any pistol. He will face three right-handed hitters, and they're all tough. Pappy Morgan, Ross Doty, and Brent Duhong. 
Morgan tonight is 0 for 3. He's made contact all three times. Flew to first, then to left, and then grounded to DeVille. The importance of getting that first out has been magnified in this inning because they couldn't do it. Curveball didn't break at all. High and outside, one ball and no strikes. The last ball game we did was last Thursday. That game went extras. If Crowley can score here, and then the Bobcats not score in the bottom of the seventh, we could be headed. Fun back to the mound. He gets by the pitcher. Runners will be on first and third. Hamus simply couldn't field it. And let's see if Myers is into the ball game now because Scott Phillips is calling in Myers. Hamus has just come a little bit unraveled and it's not all his fault. Throwing a tremendous ball game. We'll have a pitching change. Derek Myers will be the new man on the mound. We'll tell you about him in 90 seconds. Let's take this break with a score. Eunice 5, Crowley 4. This is KJJB Supersports. Street Designs of Crowley on the Crowley Eunice Highway, three miles north of Crowley, is the home of super professional window tinting, lettering, banners, custom stripping, and the home of the coolest and largest selection of accessories in this area. Dick and his staff have this area's fastest growing auto specialty shop, including an all new showroom. The Cat Daddy, that's Street Designs, three miles north of Crowley on the Crowley Eunice Highway, where they have the coolest stuff in town for cars and trucks. Call 7880554. Looking for the services of a professional shoe repair shop? Look no further than Hugh Paul's Boot and Shoe Repairs. Dana Hugh Paul has won several awards for her work. And all repairs are made by Hugh Balls, from new heels and soles to rebuilding shoes. Dana even resoles baseball gloves. Ladies, take advantage of our special offer. Every fifth set of heels we put are free. Your shoes will last a lot longer when you trust them to Dana Hugh Ball, an award-winning cobbler. At Hugh Ball's Boot and Shoe Repairs, 901 North Parkinson in Crowley, call 783-7938. It's one of Acadiana's finest flower shops with some of the most creative florists in this area. It's Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F in Crowley. Mike and Tootie are waiting to create that special arrangement for that special person on that special day. Call Aurora Flowers and Gifts at 783-2224 and they'll create something special for you or one of your loved ones. Aurora Flowers and Gifts, 559 North Avenue F, where beautiful things happen every day. Chris Hamus in this ballgame allowed just four hits, striking out five, walking one, has pitched a tremendous ball game, allowing just two unearned runs. And despite the fact he's had an outstanding performance, Steve, he could be the losing pitcher. Yeah, it's just, it's been a rough go here in the top half of the seventh. Still nobody out. Crowley with runners at the corners. And the number two hitter for Crowley uh, up, and they're going to face a new pitcher. And a uh, uh, tough task, but it was a rough go here in the seventh inning for Hamas. Ross Doty is the first hitter that Myers will face. Tonight he's 0 for 3, grounded to third all three times. The third one was an error by Lance. Derek Myers now confused about the sign that McKeever's laying down, and they'll go through him again. Myers 3-0, 4.13 ERA in just over 18 innings pitched. The pitch, infield playing in, swung on and missed, blew the fastball right by Doty, and it's 0-1. On deck is the very dangerous Brent Duhon. He'll be followed by Marcus Matlock. Myers looking in. The stretch, 0-1. Fastball low in the dirt, but blocking it is McKeever. Right out in front of him, the count evens at 1-1. One one. It's obvious that Myers wants the strikeout here, and then perhaps either a strikeout, a fly ball, in the infield, or a double play ball hit by Duhon. And he's throwing like it, too, but he's got to be careful. That tying run standing only 90 feet away. He is throwing extremely hard. Well, Myers is their ace. The count is one ball and one strike. 90 feet away is Chad Richard from time to gain the pitch. Swung on and fouled off to the right side. A late swing by Doty. It's one and two. He was able to get around on Hamus. Will he be able to do it? Two Myers, even though he did not get a base hit off him. One ball, two strikes. He looks in. He stretches. He pitches. Curveball is high and outside, two and two. 
The that Bobcat one, dugout wanted that call. Yeah, that one didn't miss by a whole lot. And laying off on that pitch with two strikes, that, would, that took a lot of guts, but he got away with it to count even up. Here's another pitch, 2-2. Fastball is swung and fouled off to the right side. Count remains at 2-2. Two and two. Now right now, if you're Myers, you're thinking strikeout. That's that's number one. That's the most important. And uh, if he can get a strikeout, as you mentioned, maybe a double play a, with a win here in the seventh inning. Well, Myers has been in this situation before. Will he respond now? 2-2. Two, two. Fastball swung on and missed. That one was upstairs. Doty went for it, one down in the inning. And he had a little bit of extra on that baby. Yeah, Myers really needed that. He reached back and threw that ball uh, extremely hard right where he needed to be, up around the letters. That's a tough ball to hit. And now he got the first out. The infield for Eunice still playing in uh, on the grass, trying to cut down that run uh, at third base. And right now, it's still up to Myers. He's going to probably look for another strikeout. But right now, a ground ball right at somebody would do Eunice a lot of good, well, too. Well, Duhon has been very tough tonight. Brent Duhon was hit by a pitch in the first, doubled and scored in the fourth. And then he singled in the fifth. The stretch, the pitch, taken for a strike. On the outer portion of the plate, 0-1. And, and as hard as Hamus was throwing, looks like Myers has even more juice to his fastball. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit more on it right now. And and uh, he's hitting his spots, too. So then that's what he needs to do. He's got to be careful, especially with that tying run over there at third base. He looks in for the sign. The 0-1. Curveball is grounded up the middle for a base hit over the mound. The game is tied at 5. And perhaps that was not the pitch that Myers really should have thrown because that curveball stayed out there and Brent Duhon is now three for three. Yeah, he was trying to mix it up a little bit, throw that curveball, maybe fool him a little bit, but uh, he left it up. And if you're going to make a mistake with the curveball, you've got to make it down. That's not what happened. He drove it right back up the middle. And now with the tie ball game and still only one man out uh, for Crowley. And the batter's Marcus Matlock. He is one for three tonight. He flew to first base in the fifth to second in the first and sandwiched in between those two at bats was an RBI single in the fourth. Crowley has not led in this entire ball game and they have a man in scoring position and either Matlock or the on deck hitter Keith LeBlanc might be able to deliver for them. The stretch, the pitch, fastball taken low and away it's 1-0. Crowley with two hits in the inning, but they've also been the beneficiary of a couple of Eunice errors. Here's the stretch in the 1-0. Fastball taken for a strike. That one was right down the middle, and the count evens at 1-1. One one. Now the 1-1. One Swung on and missed. Looked like he didn't mean to there. And it's one and two. That was a high fastball delivered by the senior right-hander, Derek Myers. Yeah, that's, a tough, that's the toughest pitch you to hit is the high heat, especially throwing as hard as he is. He tried to change his mind, but just couldn't. And now with two strikes, Myers once again in position for the big strikeout. Well, let's see if he lays off that curve. Fastball swung on and missed. Boy, did he throw that right by him. Two down. Really, re he really reached back and put something on that one. I didn't even see the ball until it's right here at home plate. Well, uh, he just threw that ball right by the hitter. And, well, now you wonder away. why he even threw a curveball to Duhon. Well, exactly, and, and I think it was just to try to mix it up a little bit. But if you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake with the curveball down low. But when you've got a fat going like this, if you're standing in the box, you know exactly what you're looking for. Keith LeBlanc is 0 for 3, the pitch. Fastball, that's taken for a strike, belt high. And he really has command of the heater. It's 0-1. The first hitter in the bottom of the seventh will be Carl Abbott, but first the Bobcats have to take care of business here in the top. That pitch is swung on and grounded the first baseman Bertrand. He juggles it a little bit, but has it after it took that one big hop, and the side is retired. Not before Crowley scores two runs. They do it on two hits. There were two very, very big Eunice Ayers, and there was, there were two men left. After six and one-half innings from North Park Field in the Prairie Cajun Capital, the score, Eunice 5, Crowley 5, will go to the bottom of the seventh on KJJD Supersports. Okay, sir, on this lie detector test, the right answer gets you...
And a wrong answer gets you. Liar. You work for a car dealer who competes with Cajun Country Autoplex? Yes, I do. Fine, and you sell quality O's, GMC, Pontiac, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth, Jeep, for less, just like Cajun Country Autoplex? That's right. Liar. Uh, I mean, we try to. Liar, liar. Like Cajun Country Autoplex, you have a great selection of over 75 vehicles in stock? We do. Liar. Uh, I mean, sometimes we do. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Cajun Country Autoplex, 1700 East Laurel Avenue on Highway 190 in Eunice. Are you in the market for a new Kawasaki motorcycle? Maybe thinking about a go-kart for fun for the entire family or looking forward to summer with a new jet ski? Then make the first turn. To first turn of Crowley, that is. You'll find a great selection of outdoor fun from ATVs to motorcycles. For sales, service, parts, and accessories, stop in at first turn of Crowley. 525 Crowley Rain Highway in Crowley or give them a call at 788-1818. The Bobcats need one run to end it. In the bottom of the seventh, the score is tied at five, and Josh Hoffpower, who's done an excellent job so far, is still on for the Crowley Gents. Carl Abbott has had three plate appearances in this ball game. He is one for three, singling and scoring in the first, flying to first in the second, and grounding to third in the fourth. Hoffpower has retired six of the last seven Eunice hitters. So goes the game of baseball, and a tough night for Hamas. He threw a, a perfect a six innings. You know, he, he he gave up the three runs, but uh, he was in command. It didn't even seem like he gave up three runs. And then, he, you know, a couple of errors, uh, a couple of untimely hits, and, and Hamas is going to walk away with uh, the no decision tonight, and that's tough luck with the way that he's pitched tonight. Donnie Bollock is taking practice wins in the on-deck circle from the right side. EHS looking for the W-I-N. But Josh Hoffpower of Crowley will have something to say about it. The pitch taken outside by Carl Abbott. And it's 1-0. Abbott in the batter's box. Hoffpower on the rubber. The 1-0 delivery. Fastball high and inside 2-0. And it backed Abbott off the plate. Abbott doing what he's got to do right now as the leadoff hitter. He's making half power work ahead in the count 2-0. and I'd be extremely surprised if he's hacking away here. 2-0. That's taken for a strike on the outside corner at the knees. That was a borderline pitch. But it was given to half power. Here's the wind. 2-1. That fastball is outside. 3-1. and one. And we've talked many times about the of retiring the first hitter of the inning. 3-1 pitch. Fastball on the outside corner on the knees. Again, another borderline pitch, but don't discredit the home plate umpire. He has been consistent tonight. Yeah, no he's complaints been, He's been down there all night. Three balls, two strikes. Here comes the big payoff pitch. Taken low, ball four, and Abbott is racing towards first base. And Abbott, he's dangerous out there on the base pad. Seven for seven in stolen base attempts on the season. The leadoff man is aboard, and uh, things look good right now for Eunice. And that was an excellent bat by Abbott. A couple of borderline pitches, as you mentioned. He let him go, and he was able to work the walk. Now, Donnie Bollock knows how to hit the baseball the other way. And look at the hole he's got on the right side. The second baseman for Crowley, Brock Holly, is cheating towards the second base bag. The pitch... Looked like it hit him. No, it got by the catcher, Brent Duhon, and heading to second is the base runner, Carl Abbott. Looks like that was a pass ball. Yeah, that, that was a, a pitch that I think should have been caught. But right now, uh, out there on the hill, Hoffpower just needs to relax, gather himself in. He's in the same position that Hamas was in in the top half of the inning. It's still only a tie game. He needs to break down and concentrate on the hitter right now and not worry so much. I know it's easier said than done, but not worry so much about the runner out of second base. Off power looks in for the sign. Bollock with his practice swings. The stretch and a pitch. That ball is grounded to the right side of third. Great diving play, but it goes into left field. And scoring is Abbott. The game will end 6-5. to five. Eunice wins. An excellent diving attempt. I thought he actually made the play from this vantage point. That was Keith LeBlanc out there. But the ball got by him on that chopper by Bollock. And the Bobcats win the game. For the final score... Eunice 6, Crowley 5 in the inning. There was one run on one hit. We'll be back with a recap of this game. This 
is Louisiana High School Athletic Association Baseball on KJJB Super Sports. When it comes to fine quality furniture and appliances at down-to-earth hometown prices, no one does it better than Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. Obey has just received a new shipment of living room furniture and a style and color sure to match your decor and all at affordable prices. For furniture and appliances, make your next stop Cormier Furniture and Appliances, 611 East Laurel, the home of free delivery, low prices, and 90-day free financing. Cormier's Furniture and Appliances of Eunice. Surgery is not to be taken lightly. A competent physician and a state-of-the-art facility like American Legion Hospital can make having surgery a lot less fearful. Many surgeries today are performed with lasers, under microscopes a lot more efficient. American Legion Hospital has the latest surgical equipment for your doctor and a caring staff of professionals for you to speed along your recovery. When surgery is recommended, come to American Legion Hospital, Medicadiana's regional medical center. We're back at North Park Field in the Prairie Cajun Capital. The final score, the Eunice Bobcats 6, the Crowley Gents 5. Eunice with six runs in this ballgame. They did that on eight hits, committing three errors. Two of them were costly in the top of the seventh, leaving four men on the base pass. For Crowley, five runs on five hits. They did commit one error, and they left six men on the base pass. The winning pitcher in relief was Derek Myers. The, lure, the loser, I should say, Josh Hoffpower. Let's tell you how the scoring went in this game. In the top of the first, the Bobcats took a quick 3 nothing lead, and we'll do that in just a second. We have head coach Scott Phillips here with us. Coach, congratulations, your ninth consecutive victory. Talk about Chris Hamas. This guy really pitched well tonight and should have got the win. Yeah, Chris, Chris did a good job. We um, had an error right there in the last inning. They kind of opened it up for him. If we made that play, he probably would have won the game. Now, the win was really... Again, just like this, uh, your last win on Saturday, 10-9 to over Sam Houston, and you're winning these one-runners. We'll talk about it in a second. That win was really aiding these hitters towards the right side, and it looked like Meyer's shot was maybe a fly ball to right yeah. field, but that went well over the fence. Yeah, it was kind of like, I guess, like a track meet. We, had, we can put wind aided by the home run and by the double on down the line for them. You know, it, Big, big win today. You know, um, We needed that. There's not many games we've had where people come from behind tied and we win. Usually with this game like that, we fall apart. We hung in. Myers did a good job coming in there and getting the win for us. You know, that was a cheap win, but he, he earned it. You know what I mean? Now, this might be asking an obvious question, but what does this say for the character of your ball club that they're winning now a couple of these close games? And sometimes a young team like that can fold under pressure you know, and lose some of those games, but they're coming through. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, that's something we really needed to see. Crowley never gave up. They, you know, whenever the, the um, three-hole Duhon came up to the plate, we, we knew he's a good hitter. Threw him a good curveball away, and he drove it up the middle. Um, scored a run right there, and um, like I said, they can they competed just as hard as we did, and you know, it was just lucky we had last swing. That's all I can say about that. Now, has your offense been progressing? Do you think? Because we talked last week, and you said your defense was responsible for the majority of the victories, but today, unfortunately, the defense played very well, but abandoning you in the seventh inning. Yeah. How do you feel the offense is progressing so far throughout this point in the season? I feel like we started off kind of like it looked like last year's team, where we start off just jumping out of the gate, scoring a lot of runs, and then. We kind of fall off at the end, and um, that's pretty much what happened today. We started off with three-run spot in the first, and looked like we were going to roll these guys. In the left, we was pretty much throwing it right over the plate, and we were hitting pretty good. And then they started changing speed zones, gave up some of our three and four. I mean, our four-hole hitter Lance Devine, they gave him trouble today. Now this is one hell of a rivalry. You lose by one run to Crowley before you beat him by one run. You face him two more times this season. So. When you're getting prepared for the playoffs later on in this season, assuming your team will make the playoffs, which is what the majority of us will think, this is going to be some tough competition you're going to face throughout the rest of the district yeah. season. Everybody's got a chance in the district right now. Um, the Ritter's the only one that's really kind of down. They're, you know, they're not scoring many runs, and they're getting a lot of runs scored on them. Crowley lost to um, Leesville 5-4 the other day. Um, they've lost a lot of run, one-run games. I talked to Coach before the game. I think they lost six one-run games. And, um, you know, if they're losing one-run games, they're right there. So, you know, they're going to, they're going to be press, pr pressing for one, two, or three in district also. Now, with a game three days from now against Leesville, and then two days later scheduled here, you have a doubleheader against yeah. Parkway. How is that setting up for your pitching rotation? Well, we kind of got banged up today. Olivier was on his way to um, the game, got in a wreck. He's got, I think he's got whiplash in the, low, in the upper back. He, his head snapped back a little bit. I was planning on trying to throw him on um, Thursday against Leesville because he's, he's, he's really been throwing the best for us. ERA's in the 1-5 um, or so like that. I don't know how he's going to recover. We'll have to see. We'll have to put some ice on him tonight. Um, Miles looked real good. That's the hardest he's thrown for us today. 
Um, and Bollock, you know, he's, he's, he's off of about a four or five day rest, so he, he'll be good to go Thursday also. Might you mix Myers and Olivier a little bit in the closer's role, or was the only yeah. pitching that the reason Myers pitched today was because Olivier was injured? Yeah, um, we, I, I asked Olivier, and he told me he was real sore. And usually he's, he's ready to go, he's pretty game all the time. And um, Donnie was the only really the other guy we could have brought in, but he, he's such a slow guy to warm up. It takes him a while. He's one of these guys that's got to start. He's got to warm up a long time and get the start, bring him in from um, relief. It's kind of tough. And um, Myers, he's just got a game on him all the time. He's always ready to play. He was a little sore, but you know, you, you just want to get out there and compete, and that's all you can ask. Coach, congratulations. Your team's having a great season. We'll look forward to the rest of district play, and it's a long schedule, as you yeah. mentioned the other day. You're going to be traveling a couple of more times to far away places, yeah. so 10 games in 23 days. This ball club's going to get plenty of playing time. Yeah, it's almost like a um, summer league schedule, really, because you're playing almost, it seems like every day, really. You know, we, we've either got a JV freshman game the next day. We don't really get a whole lot of practice. It seems almost like a um, summer-like type situation for American Legion, pretty much the same. Coach, congratulations. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Appreciate it. Let's go through the individual totals for you. First, let's tell you how the game went. The Bobcats took a 3-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning. Derek Myers led off the game with a double. Carl Abbott then singled, and Derek Myers would score on the back end of a double steal as Abbott stole second base. Donnie Bollock was then hit by a pitch, and then two batters later, Rocky McKeever made it 2-0 on an RBI ground out. Then Bubba Gotro with two outs would double into left field. That would score Donnie Bollock, and it was 3 to nothing. Chris Hamus, meanwhile, was pitching an excellent game. And then in the top of the fourth inning, Crowley put a little bit of a dent into that Eunice lead when Brent Duhon doubled. That was followed up by Marcus Matlock's single. And then a couple of batters later, Josh Hoppower would single in or would hit a fly ball to right field, I should say, for the second run of the inning, and then it was 3-2. to two. However, Derek Myers' two-run homer in the bottom of the fourth inning got those runs back, making it. 5-2, to two, but Crowley was not done. This team was pesky all night in the top of the fifth inning with one out. Chad Richard walked, and then with two outs, Lance DeVillier committed an error at third base, basically just dropping a ground ball hit to him. He had a tough night, but he's an excellent player. Tonight was not one of his best nights. Crowley made it 5-3. to three. That lead stood up until the top of the seventh when Holly led off by reaching base on an error by DeVillier, and then Chad Richard hit a double in the left center field gap, scoring Brock Holly to make it 5-4. to four. Myers then came on. He struck out Ross Doty, but Brent Duhon singled up the middle, tying the ball game. Myers then struck out Matlock and induced a ground ball to first base by the fifth place hitter, Keith LeBlanc, which took us to the bottom of the seventh inning. That's when Carl Abbott then walked. He went to second on a pass ball. He would score on that single right down the third baseline, which barely, barely evaded the glove of the diving Keith LeBlanc, scoring Carl Abbott. And the Bobcats won it 6-5. to five.